Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Am I a Nicki fan? Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. That's suspicious. I'm not the type of person that if there's something that you could talk it out, you could talk it out because it's not always rah, 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 this, rah, 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 that because we grown. Well, that rah, rah never was the icon issue. Nicki Minaj v Cardi B. Let's talk about it. This is probably the most publicized female rap feed ever involving two of the most successful female rappers ever and I'm sure you know a thing or two about it already. And I want to show the full timeline of what really happened because I think a lot of people's opinions on this feud was tainted due to the fact that the feud happened when the vlogs and the general public was against Nicki Minaj, when the hatred was in full effect. What I realized about this feud is that the circumstances leading up to Cardi's career was built in every single way that makes her Nicki Minaj's feud seem like destiny. With the people she's surrounded by, the label she's signed to, and the unwritten rule in rap that there can only be one female rapper, the feud was bound to happen. So today's this video, I'm gonna tell you why I think that is and give you the timeline of the events and what really happened in the feud between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Disclaimer, and please listen to this disclaimer, I am a barb and as much as I try to be unbiased, there will be some bias seeping through because I love Nicki Minaj, I mean, like, I love Nicki Minaj. I will try to be as unbiased as possible in this video, I will, but I know some of you are already going to be turned off by the fact that I am a barb. So if you're one of those people, do something else and click off this video. For parts 1 to 6, I will be presenting what happened in the feud and I will be unbiased in presenting the events of what happened. And then in the last part, part 7, that's when I'll let my opinions and thoughts on this feud shine. That's when I'll probably be the most biased because that's my own opinions. I'm going to try to be as respectful as possible in whatever I say to both female rappers. What's gonna happen if you ignore this disclaimer is, you're gonna finish the video, get super mad at me, and you're gonna write a hateful and insulting comment which I inevitably ignore and not care about. I actually care about you, believe it or not, so don't waste your time on me, spend your time on something productive, and exit this video. I also want to address the people in the comments saying, this is so old, who cares, let it go, you're just instigating drama. Well, if your teacher teaches you about World War II, are they instigating trauma between the Alice and Axis powers? No! They're just educating you guys and that's what I'm doing here as well. Before we proceed, let's first look into the start of the careers of both female rappers and let's start at the very beginning and go back to the very start of the revival of female rap. Y'all know y'all will never get said because y'all are peasants. Okay. <laughs> Onika Tanya Maraj, or more well known as Nicki Minaj, was born on December 8, 1982 in St. James, Trinidad and Tobago. Her parents moved to the United States when she was still little to better provide for her and her siblings. Nicki, who was 5 years old at the time, later joined her parents in the United States to live with them. She attended the drama department of LaGuardia High School, which is a school that focuses on the visual and performing arts. After graduation, wherein she graduated with honors, bitch, she was cast in an off-Broadway playoff in case you forget in 2001. Nicki has always aspired to work in the entertainment industry in some capacity. Initially as an actress, then a singer, then she got bored with singing and so she started rapping and aspired to be a rapper. She started her career doing background vocals for other rappers in the New York area. She initially signed with the Brooklyn group, The Hood Stars, whose members included Lou Star, 7up, and Nicki's biggest fan and subsequent gay best friend, Safari Samuels. Nicki later left full force and uploaded songs on her MySpace profile, sending several of her songs to people in the music industry. She released three mixtapes, Playtime is Over, Sucka Free, and Beam Me Up Scotty. All mixtapes received critical acclaim, with the latter being praised for establishing Nicki's footprint on the rap scene, with timeless hits like Itty Bitty Piggy. During that time, Nicki was discovered by Lil Wayne through the Come Up DVD, and she was signed to Young Money, with fellow rappers like Drake and Tyga. She she then released her debut single, Massive Attack, with a music video and everything, and it kind of flopped, failing to reach the Billboard Hot 100. But don't worry about my girl Nikki because she followed that up with her second single and official lead single for Pink Friday, Your Love, which became her first solo hit, peaking at number 14 on the Hot 100. I still remember watching that music video and crying when that ninja girl killed Nikki. To that ninja girl, I have a particular set of skills. I will look for you. I will find you. She was also featured in the song Monster by Kanye West featuring of course Nicki Minaj, Jay-Z, and all that Huffin' and Puffin' Rick Ross. And Nicki's verse was such a standout amongst the other verses, it transcended the song and it transformed into something else. It became such a staple in pop culture. Nicki was also featured in a lot of songs, and when I mean a lot of songs, I mean a lot of songs. You cannot escape Nicki Minaj back in 2010. One of her features, My Chick Bad, was even nominated for a Grammy, which if you haven't watched my video about that, go watch it after watching this video. And her sense as the female rapper of the decade just became more evident when she released her debut album, Pink Friday, which boasts her 375,000 first week album sales. A deluxe version of the album was released with one of those songs on the deluxe version being Super Bass. Super Bass catapulted Nicki's career into superstardom, with the song peaking at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100, and it is now certified diamond by the RIAA. And I don't care what anyone says, it's been diamond in my karaoke and my playlist. Her next albums, Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, and The Pink Print, were massive successes as well. She had massive hits outside of her album too, for example, Bang Bang. The Pink Print received universal acclaim, with Nicki's vulnerability being praised for this album, and her going 
to a much more authentic hip hop sound and away from her more poppy sound, which was seen in Pink Friday Roman Reloaded. During 2015 to 2016, Nicki continues to show her dominance as the queen of rap, appearing in hits like Hey Mama, Side to Side, Down in the DM, Bitch I'm Madonna, Black Barbies, No Broken Hearts, and much, much more. It seems like Nicki Minaj has created such a strong empire that no one ever thought that her kingdom will ever take a hit. <laughs> and then, 2017 happened. Where do we begin? 2017 started off fairly well for Nicki actually, for a brief, brief while. She released two songs, Swalla and Nick Club, around February 2017. And though both songs were moderate hits on their own, these songs lit up a feud that was already brewing under the table, and on February 25, 2017, Remy Ma released Sheether. I'm not gonna get into that feud that much because I already have another video which explains that feud extensively. Watch that after watching this video. But what I will say is that Sheether dented the Nicki Minaj armor. Armor that no one thought was ever breakable or even touchable. Remy dented it, and she showed people that Nicki can't take a hit, a substantial one at that. And though Nicki was still able to release hits around 2017, and she did bounce off fairly well after this incident, I mean she was Nicki Minaj for God's sake, the hate train was already speeding up, and it was not gonna slow down anytime soon, because a new party just entered the building, and she just released a song that would take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> Belkalis Marlenis Almanzar, or more known professionally as Cardi B, was born on October 11, 1992, in Washington Heights, Manhattan. She attended Renaissance High School for Musical Theater and Technology, a vocational high school in the Herbert H. Lehman High School. During her teens, Cardi was employed at a deli in Tribeca. She was subsequently fired, and her manager suggested that she apply to be a stripper at the strip club across the street. She credits stripping to her getting back to school, and her way of escaping poverty and domestic violence. She attended Borough of Manhattan Community College before eventually dropping out. In 2013, she began to gain some publicity because of several of her videos spreading and becoming viral on social media, specifically on Vine and Instagram. In 2015, Cardi B joined the cast of the VH1 reality television series Love & Hip Hop New York, debuting in season 6. In November 2015, Cardi made her musical debut on Shaggy's remix to his single Boom Boom alongside Popcat. She made her music video debut on December 15, 2015 with the song Cheap Ass Weave. She released two mixtapes, Gangsta Bitch Music Vol. 1 in 2016 and Gangsta Bitch Music Vol. 2 in 2017. In late February 2017, it was reported that Cardi B had signed her first major record label recording contract with Atlantic Records. Then, on June 16, 2017, Cardi B released her breakout hit, Borak Yellow. The song climbed the charts for several months, first debuting at number 85 on the Hot 100 until it eventually hit number 1 on September 25, 2017. She became the first female rapper solo to top the charts since Lauren Hill's Do Up That Thing debuted atop the chart in 1998. It is also now certified diamond by the RAA for selling over 10 million copies in the United States. Now that they have established both female rappers' backgrounds when their feud happened, let's actually get into the feud and how it started. And no, 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 no shame. Um... So what was the relationship between Cardi and Nicki like before the feud? Well, since Cardi barely had a year of mainstream success before the feud between her and Nicki fully escalated, they really didn't have much of a relationship, but Cardi has openly referenced Nicki back in the past. You know what's real random? When that Nicki and Meek song, All Eyes On You come on, and your side nigga look at you on your love bag. And it's like, uh, oh, nigga, stay in your bag. Don't be thinking about me when you hear this song, goddamn fool. <laughs> From Facebook posts to Vine videos, we can assume she was in some way a fan of Nicki or at least she follows Nicki. And I mean if you're a female rapper right now, come on. Nicki was your inspiration, either directly or indirectly. Also, we have to acknowledge the one female rapper rule in hip-hop. There's this unspoken rule in hip-hop that there can only be one female rapper at the top. You know, even though there can be a thousand male rappers out right now and they can live harmoniously and be their own separate things, female rappers are compared to each other constantly and unfairly. They're made to be each other's competition. This isn't something new. Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim, Lil' Kim and Remy Ma, Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim, Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma, Nicki Minaj and Iggy Azalea was pitted against each other, but neither took the bait. Even now, this is happening. With Doja Cat and Mega The Stallion, Nicki Minaj and Doja Cat, Nicki Minaj and Mega The Stallion, Cardi B and Doja Cat, and of course, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. They are being compared against each other. This unspoken rule in hip hop is a big, big factor in Nicki and Cardi's feud, so we have to acknowledge that. Okay, let's actually get into the feud now. In December 2016, Cardi B made a music video appearance to Fresher's Wait a Minute remix with Remy Ma, which if you watch my video about Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma, you would know that this remix had some disses that are suspected to be aimed at Nicki Minaj. Then on January 2017, Cardi went on Hot 97 and revealed that a female rapper made her feel like she didn't belong at her first red carpet appearance, but Kelly Rowland made her feel better about it. She didn't name names, so people assumed she was talking about Nicki Minaj. But if we look into this more, Cardi's first red carpet was the 2016 VH1 Hip Hop Honors, wherein female rappers were being honored. Nicki Minaj did not attend that event. Both her and Cardi have not been on the same carpet at that time. These are some of the female rappers that were present. Nicki Minaj is not one of them. So Nicki Minaj was not the person Cardi was talking about. Kelly Rowland is also present in this specific event, which checks with Cardi's story. As we said earlier on February 25, 2017, Remy Ma released Sheether, a 7-minute diss track aimed towards Nicki Minaj. And this diss track really affected Nicki's 
Nikki's career and reputation as that song gave a lot of momentum to the Nikki hate train, which Cardi will inevitably fuel to its max and lead. But before all that happened, on the same day in February 25, 2017, Cardi B was the opening act for the East Coast hip-hop group Deluxe's Filthy America Tour, alongside fellow rappers Lil' Kim and Remy Ma, two of Nikki's most recognizable ops and feuds. From the start of Cardi's career, she was already surrounded by people who don't like Nicki Minaj. And though this move wasn't directly towards Nicki, it wasn't a good look in terms of this feud for Cardi to hang out with Nicki's ops. And again, I'm not saying this is Cardi's fault. She was a new rapper at the time, so I'm pretty sure having this opportunity was amazing for her, and she took it. Around this time in late February, Cardi B has also signed her first major recording contract with a record label that has some history with trying to recruit other female rappers to go against Nicki Minaj, Atlantic Records. And if you don't know what Atlantic Records was doing behind the scenes, Cupcake and Lady Leisure, both female rappers, came out and said that Atlantic offered them a recording contract with the clause that they have to diss or go against Nicki Minaj. I read once that you turned down a US record deal with Atlantic Records. So tell us about that. What happened? They saw my Look At Me Now video that was on World Star, and um, somebody commented on the comments and wrote my, my, my number. Then I got an American number that called me. I was like, hello, and they was like, hey, is this Lady LaSure? Hey, um, we just saw your video on World Star, and we would love to fly you out. Um, we work with Atlantic Records. So next thing you know, I flew out there, and the thing that he said to me was, we will sign you, yeah. We got this much money to sign you with, but we want you to do a diss track for Nicki Minaj. I'm not saying Cardi's record contract had a clause in it that said she added this Nicki, but we still have to recognize the label's history with trying to find female rappers to fight Nicki Minaj. So with all of these, the feud really seemed like it was bound to happen. It was like destiny. I mean, okay, if you're surrounded by people who does not like and has had public feuds with Nicki Minaj, and you're assigned to a label who has tried to sign another female rapper to go against Nicki Minaj, you have every single piece in the chest supporting you to not like Nicki. It's kind of expected that you are not gonna like Nicki Minaj. And that's not me being shady, it's just an observation. Anyways, on March 2, 2017, Cardi B does an interview with Angie Martinez and they ask Cardi if someone comes for her her, would she respond and then the interviewer sneaks in the feud between Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma and this is what Cardi had to say what if somebody were to come for you would you engage in this like do you think Nicki should reply because we had this conversation yesterday like shouldn't Nicki respond to Remy if she feels like it like it's you know it's, it's up to her what would you do I don't know if what would I do because I never been in a predicament that is like oh yeah a rap battle like a rap battle I don't do rap battles like I if somebody want to come for me all right what's up let's pull up I want to fight that's yo you can't <laughs> fight that's not hip hop Cardi huh? somebody can't come for you and you with the bars and you want to fight that's not I'm not I'm not used to that because I'm used right. to like oh a word all right that's how I feel so if somebody came for you in a song you telling me you want to fight yeah yeah no because 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 no. I don't because I don't there's the thing like I don't look for problems with nobody. I don't I'm looking for problems with nobody. And when it comes to this rap thing, I always listen to these women. I always listen to their music, right? Mm -hmm. I grew up listening to their music. I grew up listening to Kim. I grew up listening to Trina. Then when I got in high school and Nicki came out, I started listening to her. So I would be very upset that women that I look up to but will come for me. Like, it's yeah. like, damn, I always used to love that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> That's not something that I'm used to. But I wouldn't even know what to do because it's like, Right? I don't wanna write. I don't wanna fight! On March 29, 2017, Cardi B released a now deleted freestyle on her Instagram, and many people thought it was bad for a better term. I swear to God, they ain't wanna see me leave the club. Got up in my shit, now they scared to show me love. They better see me on the pole, talking up the dubs. I guess I really gotta show them what the fuck is up. And so someone commented dumbass bars on the post, and Nikki supposedly liked the comment. But Nikki cleared the air up the next day by liking a tweet from a barb saying, This is fake SMH, stop doing this. Which confirms the screenshot was just Photoshop. On May 18, 2017, Katy Perry released. Wish Wish featuring Nicki Minaj as the third single of Katie's album, Witness. Though the song was critically mixed, the reception towards Nicki's verse was positive. In the verse, Nicki shouts out Offset, who was Cardi's rumored boyfriend at the time, rapping, My love is a movie, I'm never offset. Me and my amigos know not offset. And people were saying this started the feud and I don't think this affected anything in any way. It's not even a diss, it's just playing off the word Offset. It's not that deep. On June 11, 2017, during Hot 97's annual Summer Jam Music Festival, Remy brought out Cardi B along with the Lady of Rage, MC Light, Young and May, Moni Love, Lil' Kim, and Queen Latifah to celebrate female rappers and perform Queen Latifah's 1993 hit single Unity about female empowerment and empower other female rappers and be about women. I mean, Remy did also perform Sheether, which was bringing down another female. A female that survived the genre you are in. The female that's the most successful in the genre you are in. Literally a minute after y'all were saying love a black woman from infinity to infinity. You and I T Y love a black woman from infinity to infinity. 
dick, Nicki Minaj. But I digress. This did not look good in terms of Cardi and Nicki's relationship at all. And a lot of the barbs called Cardi out. One tweet said, I don't support Cardi B as a Nicki fan because she associates with the frauds. It's clear that she picked a side. Personally, she's canceled. Another wrote, What's sad is that at Cardi B has got flow, but she's associating herself with frauds like at Real Remy Ma. Cardi then responds to the backlash by saying, Exactly, I don't give a fuck about no beef shit. I'm not beefing with nobody. I'm not going to miss opportunities because of shit that got nothing to do with me. It's not joining forces with the enemy, it's empowering each other. I love who love me and support me. I do kind of agree with Cardi on her first tweet. The beef between Remy and Nikki had nothing to do with her, and she wasn't going to miss any opportunities because of loyalty to Nikki, who she barely met and is just neutral with. Unlike Remy, who is her friend and she has worked with. She hasn't released her breakout hit yet. She was still trying to pop. And appearing alongside these other experienced female rappers in the game, it's good exposure. But I also do see some of the Barb's' side of not wanting to support Cardi since she supported someone who has beef with Nikki on the same event. The Barb's has no obligation to support any other artist other than Nicki Minaj. We're not female rap fans, we're Nicki Minaj fans. We also have to note that Young M.A. was part of this thing, but Nikki and Young M.A. are still close friends. So we can take from this that Nikki really didn't care about who was part of this. On the same month, in June 16, 2017, Cardi released her breakout hit Vote at Yellow, debuting at number 85 on the Hot 100 in July 2017. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was bopping to the song when it came out. It's a catchy song, and I genuinely liked it. I can't make the music not bop, I'm sorry. On June 19, 2017, Cardi B tweets a friendly reminder to people to stop comparing her to other artists saying, Don't compare, don't put me against no other artists. I am Cardi B and only Cardi B. I'm in my own lane and rapping because I love to. On August 2017, Nikki was seen in the club dancing to Borak Yellow. <laughs> On the same month, on August 6, 2017, Nicki reposted a video from Cardi B of Cardi listening to Rake It Up in Instagram. From these interactions, we can safely say that Nicki Minaj had nothing against Cardi B at this point. On August 13, 2017, Cardi B posted a video of herself covering Nicki Minaj's song Win Again, an album track from Nicki's album The Pink Print. I came in here with just Husky and now I'm leaving with thousands. You bitches do what I do and can get couch in your houses. I know that you see me grin and you see the money I make on my pitch every day while my dick out your on the same day, Cardi tweets a lyric from Win Again by Nicki Minaj with the lyric being, I know they mad that I made, all this money I made, all my bitches is laced. Hashtag mood. Nicki Minaj notices this and quotes Cardi saying, I see no lie, when Barbie quotes Barbie, hashtag win again. All that reaching, you gon' fuck around to pull a muscle. Hashtag Barbie things. On August 24, 2017, Nicki Minaj is featured on No Flags by London on the track with 21 Savage and Offset. Nicki said in the song, <laughs> didn't lie in these lyrics. So the main theme of the song was about how bitches copy Nicki's style and use Nicki's name for clout. With the first lyric being, Lil bitch I heard these labels trying to make another me, people assume that this is towards Cardi. Which, it's not. Let's not forget that Nicki was in the middle of a feud with Remy Ma. I don't know how people overlook this big fact. Why is it a diss towards Cardi and not the girl Nicki's in a rap feud with and created the 7 minute diss track too? A lot of the disses are directed towards Remy Ma. I heard them stopping bags were to Shaggy, it wasn't me. Which is a reference to Remy saying Nicki stopped her bag. Now I have a problem, when you're trying to stop my bag, when you're trying to stop me from taking <laughs> care of my children, and I have a problem with that. They know my name ring bells, so they still press. Say the queen name, you can get some ill press. This was towards Remy because Remy literally said fuck Nicki Minaj and she either. Cardi barely said Nicki's name back then. There was no reason for Nicki to diss Cardi. Nicki also confirms that the verse isn't about Cardi by responding and quoting a tweet that asked if no flag is about Cardi B and Nicki Minaj said, it sure ain't. Wrote this one a couple months ago too. Hashtag no flag. Nicki also addressed this issue in Queen Radio in a stent episode in October 29, 2018. And Nicki basically says that she told Cardi it's not about her and that the reason no flag has no videos is because of Cardi. I let it ride that I, I, I met up with you in a hotel room and you told me that my verse on the 21 Savage London uh, London on the track offset record was about you. I called my engineer. I said, hey, can you tell her when I recorded this verse? She wasn't popping yet. I didn't know anything about her because she was like, she said that I did that verse about her. So offset couldn't do the video. You talking about stopping bags. I, I never tell the truth about anything. But if we want to talk about so offset and 21 Savage didn't do that London on the track record because she said that I was talking about her. It was clear that she wanted to turn them against me and she succeeded. Well, when Nikki tweeted that, yeah, nah, yeah. we we didn't know nothing about like I don't know maybe Savage can speak I don't remember like because I remember what Nikki she said she what? said like 
uh, Cardi B said that you couldn't do a song, and I'm like, that will never, oh, yeah, that never happen. Oh yeah, that my kids. That Cardi, ain't had nothing to Cardi, do with Cardi. I've never had a discussion about Nicki with Cardi. Cardi has never said Nicki name around me in her life on so, my kids. But, but do you feel like you had to play politics? No. According to Nicki, Cardi felt like the song was about her, so Cardi told Offset to not do the video. Nicki also mentions here that both her and Cardi saw each other face to face at a hotel and they talked, which will also be important. I'll get back into this later on. On August 28, 2017, at the MTV VMA, Cardi B was asked about Nicki Minaj, and this is what she had to say. I love about you, you're all about girl power. People keep trying to pit you against Nicki Minaj, and you guys are like shutting it down. Talk to me about that, and 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 sort of just how you want to remain that that girl friendship. I mean, I I don't really want problems with anybody. I don't want to be like queen. I don't want to be no this. I don't want to be no that. I just want to make music and make money. Like, I, I really don't have time to look at other women, what they doing. I'm myself. You know what I'm saying? Nobody got a problem with me. I don't got a problem with them. Somebody got a problem with me. I don't really got to do that whole industry beef. Like, you know, like, I get it popping with, with these hands. I the Mac trucks. On September 8, 2017, No Limit was released by GEZ featuring ASAP Rocky and Cardi B. It peaked at number 4 on the Hot 100. Cardi takes shots at an opponent here saying, Can you stop with all the subs? Bitch, I ain't tried. If you really want some smoke, you can pull up, you can get it. And people were saying this was a diss towards Nicki. But Cardi clears this up in an interview with The Breakfast Club. In September 15, 2017, wherein Cardi B answered the question about Nicki Minaj and this is what she had to say. Nice Did you speak to Nicki? Because I've seen y'all going back and forth. Did y'all ever have a conversation? Like she called you or you called her? You know what I'm saying? We just we just conversated, man. And that's it. Anyways, y'all, I don't care about the goddamn bro that ghetto, man. <laughs> On the GZ record, you say, can you stop with all the subs, bitch, I ain't Jared. Who was that directed to? Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? This is the thing that yeah, people... Because, you know, people don't understand, though, that mm -hmm. I got, like, beef with 10 bitches still in the hood, and I still be in the hood. <laughs> so Cardi pretty much does the rumor that the subs were about Nicki. She also said that her and Nicki conversated, which can be the conversation Nicki said both had about no flag. This interview is also where the Cardi before the culture campaign starts to take place, where they try to get Boda Kelo to number one on the Hot 100. And their campaign paid off, because in September 25, 2017, Cardi B hit number one on the Hot 100. This was a big achievement, because it was the first time a female rapper went number one on the Hot 100 so low since Lauryn Hill's do up that thing in 1998. But because of hip-hop's one female rapper rule and how society loves to pit women against each other, guess who they clown for not having a number one hit at that time? Nicki Minaj. A lot of people really were on Nicki's neck because she's been in the game, mainstream, for about 8 years at that point. And she had not received a number one hit while Scardi, who was in her first year of mainstream success, did. Which Nicki Minaj not having a number one hit by that point honestly shocked me because of how big Nicki is and the countless hits she's had, you would think she's had at least one back then. I mean, they can't say that anymore because now she has two number ones. But going back, Nicki didn't take the bait and she didn't feed into the mess because in September 25, 2017, she congratulated Cardi on Twitter by saying, congratulations to a fellow New York on a record-breaking achievement. Barty, this is the only thing that matters, enjoy it, at I am Cardi B. Cardi B responds the next day by quoting the tweet and saying, Thank you. This means so much coming from you. So it seems that both Nicki Minaj and Cardi B were forming a bit of a cute friendship here. They were actively shutting down rumors that they are feuding, they were interacting with each other, complimenting each other, and this friendship will culminate in a collaboration which will showcase both artists' strengths and this will dead all rumors and all possibilities of a feud, right? Right? It didn't? Uh, next part. Brought out the pink Lamborghini, just a race in China. Brought the race to China, just a race in China. On October 27, 2017, Motorsport by the Migos was released as a lead single for their third studio album, Culture 2. And the song featured Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. The song was a huge success, with it reaching number 6 on the Hot 100 and it being certified 3 times platinum by the RAA. Song-wise, Cardi had a good verse, the men were okay, but I think everyone can agree that Nicki ate everyone in the song up and that's not even me being shady. This is a fact that Nicki had the best verse, it's not even up for debate. But regardless of who had the better verse, the song was a bop. And seeing that both Nicki and Cardi collaborated, you would think that people would stop trying to pit these women against each other. Instead, this song just deepened the rumors, and I would even say that this song was the start of the Nicki-Cardi feud. Both Nicki and Cardi were speculated to be throwing shots at each other in the song. Cardi raps, <laughs> Whilst Nikki raps, Watch your man, so you should watch your mouth. Bitch, just press and minister the mouth to mouth. You see the press? You know what I am about? I am a pimp. I, I am like an about. Attention, I'm gonna need you to face front. You don't want smoke with me. This is a late blunt. Red jacket, chin, we ain't pulling no big stunts. My crown won't fit for your bum ass. Lizzie Von, she is custom made. Now you can't get it at sex. Violent, but if Nikki wanted to slap, ho, 
get you mine for that cake. Like a hoop, one that strip. I'm in a cup of that to rip the party. I'm Nick Lombardi, pull up in the face. I know, I can actually afford to get a pink Bugatti. Cardi B in her versing to talk about someone who was talking shit about her and now is reaching out. She also uses the theme of beefs in the verse. Nikki also seems to be talking to a supposed enemy on her verse. She uses the theme of these girlies copying her, which can also be seen in her previous feature, No Flag. So as you can see from both verses, if you take these lyrics out of context, you would think that both are dissing each other. And that's what a lot of people were doing. They either didn't know about the context or they actively chose to ignore the context so they can create this narrative. Let's watch a video from Everyday Struggle, one of the shows that really kind of built up this feud. And they discuss a theory that they have that Nicki Minaj was blindsided by Cardi's appearance on the song. Do you believe that Nicki Minaj was aware that Cardi B was going to No, be I do not believe that she thought that. Actually, when I heard the song for the first time and the Cardi verse came on, I said, wow, Cardi's the only verse that if you're listening to this entire song, sounds like whoever mixed and mastered these vocals, it was very different. Now I'm going to listen to Motorsport like Cardi's verse is not even there. And when I do that, oh, Nicki showed her ass. That made all the sense in the world. If Cardi's verse is not there when Nicki is rapping and Nicki says, watch your man, you should watch your mouth. Bitches is pressed. Administer mouth to mouth. Now, if Cardi is not on this song. The disrespect here, this is 4321. I mean, I got a brain freeze, but there are so many songs where this has occurred. This is an OG veteran move. I applaud, first of all, I want to applaud Cardi and Nicki because I love both these verses. Wait, wait, wait. How are you likening to those songs if you're saying that Nicki recorded this without knowing Cardi was ever going to be on the record? Because that's what happened in those other songs. She recorded this without knowing Cardi would be there. And boy, did she get her out of here. Now, so I think Nicki's verse was there already. I think Offset eventually had to bring this information to his fucking significant other. And when that happened, I think they broke up. First of all, let's give some context. This was around the time of the Nikki Remy beef. So I don't understand why y'all were saying Nikki was shading the girl she was with and not the girl she's in the beef with. Nikki Minaj addresses these rumors and tweets the following. These are men in our culture who simply refuse to let it go. They don't do this to male MCs. But yo, hashtag motorsport, hashtag number one added on urban radio. Anything with my name when it gets approved by me. It can't even go on a streaming service without me hearing it and giving written approval. Migos weren't even on it yet, just Quavo. The conspiracy theories are just so tired. Relax, breathe. Imagine me not knowing who on a song with me. I was on a song with Quavo. No one else was on it. He called and asked if I think we should put Barty on it and I said, okay, let's do it. The end. So Nikki is saying that she did know Cardi was on the song before it was released and that she has to give written approval before a song's released. She tells the story of how the song was originally only with Quavo, but he asked if it's okay to put the Migos and then Cardi. She also echoes the same story in Queen Radio. Everyday Struggle responds to these claims by saying Nicki Minaj is lying about knowing Cardi B is on Motorsport. This is all she was trying to tell y'all. I was not shocked by Cardi B being on the record and also I approved. Cardi B to be on the record. I was called, I was asked to buy Quavo, and I said, let's put Barty on it. Do I believe that? Do I believe that? Nikki, I was born at Nikki. night, but just not last night. Yeah, Nikki, <laughs> Nikki. Nikki. Baby, Nikki. You had to do it. Nikki, Go ahead. just shut the fuck up. Just stop. Who the fuck believes that? So let me just subscribe to her thinking for a second. In, in her thinking, <laughs> Quavo called and basically was looking for permission to put the group's or one of the group members' girlfriend on the song? How did, how did Nikki think that conversation was gonna go? Honestly, what you was gonna say? Nah. I know that Nikki's brand is huge, but people are using Cardi B. Cardi B is hot as fucking fish grease and she's being used. Nikki, your brand is huge and you're a fucking huge superstar brand-wise, but you need that record and you need that look. You do. So what you was gonna say? No. Of course you were clearing it. Oh, honestly, watching this, I completely understand why Nikki was cursing this bitch out. She didn't know this other bitch was on the record. You said it. Now that is, again, implying that I'm lying. When I sat and said exactly how the song came about, that I was asked, and I still have the text messages, can this person be put on the song? And my response was, yeah, let's do it. And you still went and said, and I think your sidekick, Alvin the Chip uh, Academics, not, I'm not sure. Not. Nicki Minaj is lying. On one hand, Nicki Minaj is the all-powerful, all-knowing, all this, all yeah. that. But on the other hand, I'm that powerful that a whole record company could put a could put a whole person on a record, clear the record, and I don't know who, who's on it. No, that, I didn't never Stupid. say that. Stupid. I never That's said that. what you you really think somebody could put a song out a song out with Onika Tanya Mirage no. and I don't know who the who on the song? No, I don't. Which is why I don't know why. But you that's what you said. Point. Was Nicki Minaj and Cardi B on the Motorsport record directing bars at each other? Nigga, what the fuck? You not 
going to change the subject. I'm asking you a fucking question. It's the same subject. No, the fuck it's not. I said I knew the bitch was on a song. You said she she didn't know she was on a song. Nigga, I don't believe Just, that I said that if you want to be honest. Oh, my God. Leave that Nicki Minaj. It's a trade. No, no, but do you believe that Nicki Minaj at that point? Trade says that game no. Do you believe that Nicki Minaj was aware that Cardi B was the No. Oh, oh, okay. hold on. Let's play it back. Let's pull it back. Okay. Let's pull it back. Let's bring it back. Do you believe that Nicki Minaj was aware that Cardi B was the No. Okay, okay. Wait, hold on. Do you have a twin or oh, a stunt no. double? Wait, I stand by that. Do you have a twin or a stunt double, my nigga? I don't get why these men can't just take Nicki's word and believe what she is saying. They're acting like Nicki knowing who's on the song with her is a stretch when Nicki is a worldwide superstar and an A-lister and she's Nicki Minaj. Do you really think she doesn't have power over her features? Everyday Struggle was really out here struggling every day, pulling a muscle with all the stretching that they were doing. And also, Nicki did not need that record. She's still Nicki Minaj regardless. They're really saying Nicki used Cardi. If Nicki wanted to use Cardi for a look, why didn't Nicki ask Cardi to feature in her song or Nicki be featured in one of Cardi's songs. Nicki has always been working with new artists, whether they were popping or not. Why can't someone featuring on a song be someone featuring on a song? No connotations. Like they were pushing Nicki and Cardi to fight. Anyways, on November 29, 2017, Cardi B does an interview with Capital Extra and they talk about motorsport and the interviewer asks Cardi about her situation and this is what Cardi had to say. Hey, Cardi, Vicky, are you too? Are you? I spoke to her before. I saw her in person before. What happened? We spoke about things. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't getting into detail because it's like you know like I I'm not trying to get the gossip I'm not I'm just uh, yeah, I'm just saying you good or you know what I mean yeah mm -hmm. but um cause you're on a track together so I wanted to well you know when I when I when I heard the track right. her verse wasn't finished well, it's not the verse that is on right now. And, um, you know, Quavo told me, like, to get on the song. And I just feel like it's a perfect opportunity for me to be on a track that is so, that's big like them. True. Because those are two big people. And I, and, and, I'm, and I just started in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh, I know that if I get on this record, it's going to be crazy. You done, done your job. You done your job. Yeah, you done your job on that. Yeah, so it's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on it. And I jumped on it. Because of Cardi's comment, people thought that Nicki had deliberately changed her verse once she learned Cardi B was joining the song. The song that originally just featured her and Quavo. Also, Cardi did say both her and Nicki met in person, which can be the meeting about her and Nicki about No Flag. On December 8, 2017, the music video for Motorsport dropped, and honestly, it was a great video. But there was something notable about this video which is relevant to the feud. Both Nicki and Cardi did not appear together in any scenes in the video. So people try to push this narrative that there is a problem between Cardi and Nicki because of this. In later interviews, both Cardi and Nicki confirms that there was a scheduling conflict because of Tokyo. She's using my hairdresser now, so even he can attest to the fact. Tokyo. He knows that there really was a scheduling conflict, and it was because of him. He's the one that couldn't show up. And I texted him. I said, you know that if I don't show up the day she's shooting, they're going to act like it's it's because I'm doing it to be mean. It's the opportunity in a motorsport video to show some real camaraderie, whatever schedules. I mean, why, why didn't you guys, weren't you guys together in the video at the same time? I heard that she just, that she couldn't shoot that day. And just timing. I just heard that she couldn't shoot that day, and it's just like... People just made a lot of theories of everything. We are going to be stepping away from motorsport for a quick second. But on December 22, 2017, Cardi releases her second single, Barty or Cardi. It peaked at number 14 on the Hot 100, and it was a cute little bop. And remember this song because this song will come back later. Around January 2018, Cardi B was caught stalking Nicki Minaj on Instagram. And she wasn't just scrolling past her photo in her feed. She clicked on the post, and she lurked in it. She seen my sexy ass every time she scrolled. I think it was just embarrassing and was given a lot of meaning because of what will happen to them. On March 29, 2018, Cardi B released Be Careful as the third single from her album. And it was a modern hit, peaking at number 11 on the Hot 100, and it is now certified three times platinum by the RIAA. But on the same month, on March 2018, a video leaks of Partisan Fonting rapping over Be Careful, which kind of ignites the allegations that Cardi B has a ghostwriter. Man, I thought you would have learned your lesson. Partisan is now a frequent collaborator of Cardi as he is credited to a lot of Cardi's songs. So he's not really technically a ghostwriter. On April 6, 2018, Cardi releases her debut album, Invasion of Privacy, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, selling over 255,000 album units. And it has now been certified three times platinum. All of the tracks are certified gold or higher by the RAA. That is great numbers for a debut album and a female rapper. In the album, there wasn't really any disses towards Nicki Minaj. Just some basic, you know, run of the mill, braggadocious hip hop lines about being the best, having beef with bitches. I don't think anything was directly towards Nicki or no one has picked up on anything there. Cardi did an interview the same day with Ebro as promo for her album and Ebro asked Cardi about sneak dissing and whether there is beef between her and Nicki Minaj. And this is what Cardi had to say. I'm not the type of person that if there's something that you could talk it out, you could talk it out because
because it's not always rah 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 this rah 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 that because we grown unless you want to take it to the rah rah this rah rah that but other than that it's just like i just feel like fans just keep doing it like they just keep doing it they just keep doing it like because they they want it what what is it that y'all that that people expect from me to do or say i already say she's an amazing artist i already say i pay my respect to her i, I did videos before jamming to her songs like it's like what do people expect so cardi says that the beef was just internet made up and that people are just creating this narrative because they know it would be entertaining and considering you are watching this video she was right on the same month nikki breaks her hiatus by announcing both chun li and barbie things and on april 12 2018 nikki minaj releases both tracks both songs seems to have disses in them in barbie things nikki's first verse is clearly aimed at remy mom with lines like it's time to make hits and it's time to diss how you still doesn't still can find some hits was it worth it dummy i'm man the best on the show getting no chips time to dip which is a reference to remy mom not having any hit songs after she and how she's still in the show love in hip-hop. The second versus target is sort of up in the air. It might be towards Cardi because Nicki is talking about people copying her and stalking her. Which if you remember, Cardi B was caught stalking Nicki Minaj. On Instagram, Nicki raps, rap bitches to the team make him like Barbie. Had to come off IG so they can't stalk me. All they do is copy looks, still music too. Want to see what bitches do when they lose the blue print. She echoes her point in the third verse. When she raps, when it comes to sealing flows, these birds is fluent. But they said that when they asked about the queen's influence. Do I think this was a diss towards Cardi? I don't think it was. I think it's just a regular hip-hop lyric. This is not the first time a rapper and Nicki Minaj has said other rappers copy their style, both male or female. It's not that deep. On Chun Li, Nicki Minaj was talking about people making her the bad guy, Chun Li. And I don't think this was specifically towards Cardi. I think Nicki was being general, but I do think Cardi is part of that general pool of people that Nicki is referring to. And this was backed up by Nicki's interview with Zayn Lowe the same day, where Zayn Lowe asks Nicki about the ongoing rumor of Nicki's beef with Cardi. And this is what Nicki had to say. Do you want to address the existing rumor that you're taking shots at Cardi? Is that an, ex an existing rumor? There's a rumor around, yeah, that there's, but that's in another song, the snippet from the other song, not Chun Li, the snippet from the other song. Song. There's a, there's definitely a story out there about the about the song that about you don't know about this? I had no clue. Um that particular song I wrote in Paris about a year and a half ago. It was actually for for Drake's last album. You're kidding. That's to tell you how how long ago I wrote that song. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So is that gonna be on the record? On the album? I don't know. I, didn't, de I definitely didn't want to discuss uh, a, a leak. I mean, why would I want to do that? That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Let's talk about this. Fo so focus. But on I will say, yeah. Um, shout out to Cardi and all the new female rappers yes. who've been doing their thing. You know, with um, Cardi B, she's done exactly what she should have done. You know, she's just gone full steam ahead, and you know, you know, c congratulations to her. The only thing with Cardi that really, really, really hurt my feelings yep. was the first interview she did after Motorsport came out. I remember, like, when I first came in the game, if a female of that stature had done a feature with me. On on it, I would only be, you know, singing their praises and, uh, and and saying thank you. The first interview she did after Motorsport came out, it just really hurt me because she looked so aggravated and angry. And the only thing she kept saying was, "Oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that verse. I didn't hear that verse." She changed her verse. Like I was like, "What?" And so her most recent interview, Cardi, that's when I just came back on Instagram and I saw it and I felt good. I finally felt like she said something genuinely nice about me. But um, with Motorsport, I kind of felt ambushed. You know, I felt like Quavo at that time was like, Quavo is my baby. I love Quavo. And um, at the time I told, I went on Twitter and I explained how Motorsport came about and, you know, people were saying that I was lying. So I texted Quavo and I said, hey, just, you know, could you back me up on this? Because, you know, I don't want people to think I'm lying. What do I have to lie about? And he didn't back me up. And, you know, he texted me. He was, he was like, I would go on Twitter and back you up if you were my girl. LOL. And that hurt because he's somebody, like, I love him, you know? Quavo told me, I'm not going to go on Twitter and address that shit, man. Like, if I do an interview, you know, then I'll, then I'll address it. And I was like, yikes, you know, because it hurt my feelings to know that people would watch me be slaughtered and no, not one person will step in to say the truth. You know, they will run with that lie. They'll allow people to run with the lie because it's entertaining to make Nikki seem like a bad guy. And it's sad. Quavo texted me. I still have the text in my phone. First of all, Quavo came to my studio and played um, Motorsport. He was the only person on Motorsport. I said, oh, that's that's a hit. That's out of here. I want to get on that one. He wanted me to get on a record call. She for keeps. I said, no, please, 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 please. Let's do motorsport. He came back after and said, you know, um, all the guys going to be on motorsport. I was like, okay, yeah, I figured that. You know, I knew that much because I knew they were working on their group album. And he texted me and he said, is it okay to put Cardi on it? And I still have the text in my phone where I said, yeah, let's do it. And that's the only story I told. You know, I said how exactly how it came about. And when it was time to clear the air about that, no one did that. You know, everybody, all of them allowed me to look like I lied. And you still did interviews and y'all all still jumped around that and just to paint Nikki as the bad person so that you could play the victim and um, that really, really hurt me because I really fully supported her. And um, up until this recent interview that she did, I had never seen her show me genuine love in an interview. And I could just imagine how many girls wish they could have been on a song with Nicki Minaj. I'm not saying it in a cocky way, but like, yikes.
I'm not saying that in a cocky way. I'm saying it like the first thing out of your mouth when someone asks you about a Nicki Minaj feature is, she changed her version of it. Excuse me? It's because of the Nicki hate parade that she felt the comfortability to address me in that matter. So Nicki Minaj basically says here she just wanted Cardi to put some respect on her name. Because imagine hopping on a song with Nicki Minaj and all you had to say was she changed her verse. With the motorsport situation, Nicki felt ambushed because when people like Everyday Struggle created these conspiracy theories about Nicki and Cardi not liking each other on the song, no one in the song addressed it and cleared the air up other than Nicki. Around the release of Chun-Li and Barbie Tings, DJ Academics announced on his Twitter that he had Nicki's original verse on motorsport. Remember Cardi said Nicki's verse wasn't finished and it wasn't the verse that was on right now? Anyways, DJ Academics went on his Twitch stream and he played Motorsport with Nicki's original verse. The original verse is very similar to the official verse. The original just had a singing part replace a rap part in the verse and there were some line differences. And one line difference that is very notable is that in the official verse, Nicki said, If Quavo the QB, I'm Nick Lombardi. But on the original verse, Nicki raps, If Cardi the QB, I'm Nick Lombardi. Nicki addresses this on a tweet and says, How can you say someone changed their verse and forgot to say Quavo told me to remove my singing part, which I love, and Atlantic told me to remove your name from my verse per your request. So how are these changes gonna happen if I didn't change change my verse. So according to Nikki, both Quavo and Atlantic Records asked Nikki to create the supposed changes Cardi was referring to on her verse per Cardi's request. But somehow, this was spun to Nikki for some reason. What I don't understand is two things. Why are people saying Nikki is a liar? Because there are some websites saying she lied when she never denied she changed her verse. And second, why is it being perceived as a diss towards Cardi? Not just the line change, but the entire verse. When all the shots Nikki threw in Motorsport were towards Remy. Watch a man, then you should watch your mouth. It's because Remy's husband, Papoose, accidentally liked a comment on Nikki's picture. You see them stats, you know what I'm about. It's towards Remy because Remy was fighting Nicki when Nicki had the exponentially better rap sheet. Remy just dropped a 7 minute diss track that starts with Remy saying fuck Nicki Minaj. Why would Nicki focus on dissing Cardi when she's having a big feud with another rapper? What's more likely, Nicki was shading Cardi or Remy, the one who Nicki is publicly fighting? And also the line, if Cardi the QB, I'm Nick Lombardi. Why wasn't it a diss when Nicki said if Quavo the QB, but it was a diss when Nicki said Cardi's name? It doesn't make fucking sense. And also, Nicki's not saying Cardi B is her bitch with this line. If y'all don't understand the bar, QB is the abbreviation for a quarterback. Lombardi is a surname of Vince Lombardi. Lombardi, the former head coach for the Green Bay Packers. Lombardi coached the Packers to victories in the NFL's first two Super Bowls, Super Bowl 1 and Super Bowl 2. The Super Bowl trophy is also named after Lombardi. So Nikki is saying here she was going to coach Cardi to victory, just like what Lombardi did. I don't understand how y'all are supposed to be hip hop heads but can't understand that simple bar. And y'all try to spin it to fit your narrative that Nikki was dissing Cardi when she wasn't. And why would Nikki diss Cardi on a song they're in together? Give me one good reason why Nikki would diss Cardi and say her name at the same time on a song they are in together. There is none. And also Nikki never mentions anyone's name when she's dissing someone on a song. Roman's Revenge was a diss towards primarily Lil' Kim, and No Frauds and Change It was a response to Remy Ma either. Show me where Nikki said both girls' names there. And counting all the features where Nikki dissed other people, she never says your name when she disses you. The closest that this happened was when Nikki said somebody ushered this boy into a clinic, and she wasn't even explicitly saying usher. It was wordplay. So why make an exception to Cardi? She didn't because that line was not a diss. Anyways, moving from Motorsport, on May 7, 2018, the Met Gala took place with the theme Heavenly Bodies, Fashion, and the Catholic Imagination. And both Cardi and Nikki attended, and looking amazing. Both came face to face and were spotted talking and having a civilized conversation. And they have a cute moment together. On the same month, Cardi B does an interview with Howard Stern. Okay, you hating ass bitch. All oh, fraudulent. Take your shoes off. You're lucky to didn't hit me, bitch. Let's now go on to part 5 and yes, I did change my clothes because that leather jacket was roasting me and setting out. On August 10, 2018, Nicki Minaj releases her fourth studio album, Queen, which, despite what other people say, was a success. It peaked at number 2 with 185,000 album units sold. Of course, as I said, I am a barb so I love this album. And this album, above all else, really showcases Nicki's lyrical ability. And using said lyrical ability, some people are saying Nicki dissed Cardi in some of the songs in the Queen album. In Ganja Burns, Nicki raps, You gotta have real skill, gotta work for that. If it's really a passion, would you get the world for that. Unlike a lot of these hoes with the whack lit, at least I can say I wrote every rap a spit. Hard White is another song that people are saying Nicki dissed Cardi in, which I can confidently say that in this song, Nicki was not dissing Cardi. As Nicki references she was partying in Paris, which is a reference to when Sheether dropped, Nicki was partying in Paris and she didn't address Sheether immediately. In Hard White, Nicki raps, uh, look how my knock offs, I told them knock it off. Anything that Nicki do, you know they knock it off. Put my crown on again and I'ma knock it off. Anything with Nicki in it, they gon' pack it off. I mean profit off. My plug Drop it off. You see them copying my hair, tell them chop it off. Uh, bad gal with the top is off. You gonna see him downgrade when we drop him off? Uh, I ain't never played a whole position. I ain't never have to strip to get the pole position. Hose is dissing? Okay, these hoes is wishing. You're in no position to come for O's position. I ain't moving weight, but I'm in the dope position. Some people are saying the strip to get the pole position is towards Cardi. And also the you're in no position to come for O's position is also towards Cardi. In LLC, Nikki raps, Took a little break, but I'm back to me. Trying to make a new Nikki where the factory. They'll never toe-to-toe -to -toe on a track with me. They'll never be another one after me. Cause the skill level is still just a half of me. 
me. Blasphemy, my boys will blasphemy. All these low IQ hosts baffle me. Tell them that I watch bitches take a bath from me. Bunch of trophies in my crib like an athlete. I see them giving fake love, but the trash is weak. We don't pay boys to front like they like my shit. We don't pay boys to come in and rap my shit. Uh. Nicki Minaj also does an interview with Genius, wherein she talks about LLC. I'm not able to show the interview because of copyright reasons. But basically, Nicki said in this interview that the song really isn't about a specific person, but more of a general pool of thought. So she's saying there was no shade in the lyrics in LLC because it is a fact that labels want another Nicki, a female that is profitable. And sir, Nicki raps, get her a ticket, sir. She's a fan, sir. Can keep her man off my Instagram, sir. Says she was better than me, what a prankster. She echoes this statement back in Motorsport, which you might think is a diss towards Cardi, but again, this is a diss towards Remy as her husband was caught liking a comment on Nicki's pic and Instagram. So, are all these disses towards Cardi? I don't think so. Maybe it was just a braggadocious hip hop line that Nicki wrote for a general group of people and not just one person. But I think, if not all, at least most of the disses here are towards Remy. But as Nicki rapped in Hard White, Around the release of the Queen album, Nicki talked to Ebro in Queen Radio, and Ebro asks him about Remy and Cardi. And this is what Nicki had to say. I'll be honest, I never saw you and Remy heading in this path. I never saw that. I never saw you and Cardi heading in this path. I never saw that. And do you believe that these things are fixable? Because women in rap are having a, a time right now. Can, like we just a move, lot of can we please move on, Ebro? Come on, honestly, let's go. You already know, I, I, if you know me, you would know the answer to the first question. Like, give me a fucking break, okay? Now, um, I didn't know uh, Cardi and I had an issue, but I guess we do a sense of saying it, and, you know, other, other people are saying it. Um, to me, she may have taken an issue with things that I've said, but I'm not going to bite my tongue. I mean, this is right. You gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta have thick skin. People talk shit about me all the time. I don't go around and tell people, oh, stop posting me because I see one bad thing about myself. You can't expect to be liked and loved and praised all the fucking time. Give me a break. I mean, look, I'm used to it, you know. So people speak come on to me it, all the bro. Time. Speak on it. Listen, but people think I'm bullying them when I'm no. like, so people don't like you. People don't get along. So what? Yeah. It's, it's, it's whatever. If you come, you coming into the wrong game if you want just people to kiss your ass and suck your dick all day, my nigga. Like, come on. On August 21, 2018, at the MTV VMA Awards, both Nicki Minaj and Cardi B attended. Nicki Minaj attended in one of my favorite looks from her, and Cardi B seems to diss Nicki Minaj here. This comes at a contrast to the 2017 VMAs, where Cardi shut down rumors that her and Nicki Minaj was feuding. I want to thank all my fans, my family that supported me, all the love that everybody shows me is genuine, is beautiful, and that's something that God gave me that you can't buy, bitch. <sighs> now, I think this is the moment you have all been waiting for. The culmination of this feud. If this feud was a ticking time bomb, this was the moment it all exploded. On September 7, 2018, the annual Harper's Bazaar Icons Party was held and it honored music royalty with a star-studded New York Fashion Week event at the Plaza Hotel. Both Cardi and Nicki attended, with Cardi being the first to attend and Nicki arriving minutes later. Both did interview separately and they seemed like they were cool individually and that there was nothing going on. But then, a couple of minutes later, people heard shouting in the balcony above the red carpet. And this is what happened. Stop! 
So according to TMZ and several eyewitnesses, Nikki was with her crew at a table and her crew included her best friend Ra Ali and remember her because she's gonna be important. So Nikki was just chilling there when Cardi aggressively approached the table and this was according to eyewitnesses. Cardi said, let me tell you something as she lunged towards Nikki. And in the scuffle, Cardi's dress got ripped and security allegedly elbowed Cardi on the head. Security stopped Cardi inches from contact with Nikki. So because Cardi can't reach Nikki and she can't hit her, she got her shoe out and she threw it at Nikki. Luckily, it missed. Cardi was escorted out by security and she left the building with a ripped dress, no shoes, and a big knot on her head. Nikki, according to reports, did not flinch during Cardi's attack and she went about the party as if nothing happened. She left the building looking like this, amazing, and she went to her hotel room. People really thought that Nikki would leave disheveled, but Nikki said, not on my watch. Anyways, after the altercation in Fashion Week, Cardi posts a notes app message on her Instagram to explain her side. She posted, I've let a lot of shit slide. I'll let you sneak this me, I'll let you lie on me, I'll let you attempt to stop my bags, fuck up the way I eat. You've threatened other artists in the industry, you told them if they work with me, you'll stop fucking with them. I'll let you talk big shit about me. I address you once in person, I address you a second time in person, and every time you cop the plea. But when you mention my child, you choose to like comments about me as a mother, make comments about my abilities to take care of my daughter is when all bets are fucking off. I've worked too hard and come too far to let anybody fuck with my success. Bitches talk all that shit in their raps, but in real life, they pussy. This shit really is for entertainment. This was the alleged tweet that Nikki liked. Nikki, on the other hand, tweeted a link to the Queen album when that night happened with no context at all. I mean, props to Nikki, her music comes first, a businesswoman indeed. She didn't address the altercation immediately, but Nikki did like some tweets and she changed her header to this. And no, 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 no shame. Um. In fact, it took Nikki up to September 10 before she even addresses it on the 8th episode of Queen Radio. And this is what Nikki had to say. No, from Nothing the beginning, the beginning, mean. beginning. I hate when some people come at me and it's like, oh, Cardi, why are you coming at people's kids for? But I'm my mother's kid. Okay. Like, oh. the same way your kid is your baby, I'm my mother's baby. You know, if my mom was to be scrolling down and she see people talk about Bring me, it back. that would hurt her feelings. That would Bring it back. Nothing is off limit. I hate when some people come at me and it's like, oh, Cardi, why are you coming at people's kids for? Bring it back. But I'm my mother's kid. Nothing is off limit. I hate when some people come at me and it's like, oh, Cardi, why are you coming at people's kids for? But Hold I'm on, stop it, kid. stop it. So let me just say this. The other night, I was a part of like the something so mortifying and so humiliating to go through in front of a bunch of upper echelon. And it's not about white or black. It's about upper echelon people who are, people who have their lives together. The way they pass by looking at this disgusting commotion, I will never forget. I was mortified. I was in Alexander Voltaire gown, okay, mm -hmm. off the motherfucking runway. And I could not believe how humiliated it all felt because we, and I use we loosely, and I'm gonna clarify we, how we made ourselves look. And I'm gonna get back, but before I go, I wanna say that I would never discuss anyone's child. And it's so sad that for someone to pin that on me because I'm the bad guy and they know people would believe them. So let me just go on record having said, I would never talk about anyone's child or parenting. I don't care about anyone's parenting. I don't give a shit. And it's so crazy to me that people always need to make Onika the bad guy. If you're right in whatever you're doing you don't ever have to make someone into the bad guy just speak your right. truth when you have to say that i said or did something that you know i've never said or did i didn't see it where did where, where was that where no did clue it come from no clue i, I flex i have no clue i just want to let the world know that onika tanya mirage would never has never and will never speak ill of anyone's child i am not a clown that's clown shit the other thing that's clown shit is telling or is telling the world that someone said something just so that you don't feel fucking dumb for looking dumb for doing dumb shit you knew that when that footage came out you was about to look fucking dumb so your publicist who also looked dumb standing there about to tape thinking somebody's about to get snuffed or something put the phone camera out <laughs> And that's not what, she, that's not what she be doing. <laughs> okay, so they hurried up and put out a statement. And you know what? I'm such an ill-ass bitch. I didn't even feel the need to defend myself that night and say, I didn't say this. I didn't do this. I didn't stop no bags. Give me a break. But I'm going to get I it. I don't I'ma, understand. How did bags stop? I'm going to get in. It's a la bunch of lies, but I'm gonna get into it. I just want everybody to marinate for two minutes. I'm finna come. But we did hear this woman who accused me of saying something about her child just say that nothing's off limits even talking about people's kids because she has built her career off of sympathy and payola.
play Barbie Dreams. Let's go. Let's go. So let me get back to what I was saying. The other night, I dressed up really, really nice, and I looked so beautiful. Shout out to my team. My glam team has been really killing it. And so much went down, but one of the things that went down was just horrendous accusations about me that never, ever happened from a person who literally did tell a male rapper not to do my video, not to be in a video with me. And, you know, he listened. He didn't do it. I never bitched him on about it. I, I never spoke about it. People know it's so easy to now say, Nicki Minaj stops my bags. They stopped, she's stopping my bags. They know it's so easy to say that and for people to believe them. So I saw someone write a lot of, well, they didn't write it. Their publicist wrote it. Wrote a lot of uh, lies about me. And, and um, I never normally defend myself, but I can't do that anymore. I have to defend myself and let people know these lies are ridiculous and if I were to tell you the real things about some of these people you would be on the fucking floor so let's see do we have that late that girl on the phone there's somebody that I want to get on the phone really really quickly before I get into some things because we we gonna get into some things Clarissa yeah, I hear you. All right. hi Clarissa you're on you're on Queen Radio how are you I'm fine. Now tell us why Brooke reached out to you and what you want to let the people know because there's millions of people listening and we wanted to hook up and be there for you. What you wanted to let the people know today? You said to, to tell you what Brooke kicked me up about? Yeah. Yeah, what did you want to talk okay, about? When she, all right, when she inboxed me, she asked me to give her my phone number so I could um, come on here and talk about what happened between me and Cardi B. And what, and what happened? What was that? Back in 2014, she had posted up an Instagram video. So this was before, the, this was right before she got on Love and Hip Hop. And, you know, um, she made a video talking about her teeth. She was basically saying, I'm like, oh, I'm not fixing my teeth. I don't give a fuck what nobody has to say. Whatever she was saying. So I had commented on it, and I was like, well, you know, you should just get them done or whatever. Not saying it, like, in a bad way, but I'm just saying, like, you saying you don't care what you say, but just do it, whatever. So once that happened, she went to my Instagram, and she must have read my bio. And my bio is saying, rest in peace to my son that passed away. Mm -hmm. So when she read my bio, that's when she came back at me with the comment, and it was like, oh, She, are you a are you a black woman, ma'am? Yes, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican and black. Okay, she called your child a monkey, your dead child. Rest in peace to your child. She called your child a monkey and said if you wouldn't have been doing some nonsense that your child would have been alive, and she doesn't know you. Yeah, she, yeah, she was saying if I, if I, maybe if I would have been all this other stuff, my son would have been alive. You had a, something about your dead child in your bio, and you were hit up by her saying, ha, 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 that's good, that's why your baby died, and maybe they wouldn't have died, and you're calling your, your dead child a monkey. Yeah, she didn't hit me up directly in DMs. It was underneath one of her posters as a comment. Oh, okay. We have the screenshot of it. I just wanted to hear it from your mouth because, you know, so very often I let people do a lot of bullshit talking about me and people right. around the world believe it, but they don't know what type uh -huh. of disgusting pig this person is. Yeah. So thank you so much for calling. I will hit you back you after the show, my darling. I'm sure the bars would like to give you a nice, lovely donation, my darling. Thank you. Bye. Sound after you talk to someone Calling else. a dead child a monkey, but telling people somebody talked about your child that never talked about your motherfucking child so you can get some fucking sympathy points. Now, you want to talk about stopping bags, but it's two innocent girls in a strip club right now that ain't did nothing but go to the strip club and get money. Now they can't get no money, so who's stopping bags? Because you got grown-ass fucking men showing up to where the fuck they at and where they work at. They can't feed their kids. They can't feed their fucking family. You can't, They can't feed they fucking family because you mad at what another man sticking his dick inside of. Oh my god. You mad. You mad at a woman for what a man is doing. And that's the problem with so many black women and women, period. Oh, because she not black. Because she refers to you black women. FYI, she refers to black women as monkeys and roaches. <gasps> roaches! This is, but these are the women, th these are the women going hard for her. The roaches. Black women's is roaches now, child. <laughs> We roaches, be clear. So there are two beautiful women right now who have been accused of whoever they slept with and, you know, whatever. And now, and so they were, you know, allegedly attacked and are cut up everywhere, but not oh, but not by women, men. You sending men to beat on women. Let me tell you, but I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to yeah. preface it by saying this. What's sad is that a lot of times a man can hurt a woman so badly that she no longer even knows who she's angry at. 
And what happens is, first of all, let's get up a 1-800 number for postpartum depression. I like that sound. Because let me tell you something. That's nothing to joke about. You just had the biggest blessing of your life with a child, and in two weeks, you have attacked three women, one at Fashion Week, and left looking the way you left looking so that people could point their fingers at our culture and at our community and laugh at us some more? To not was nuts. It was nuts. Uh, it was nuts. It was nuts. You, the Lord gave you a blessing of a beautiful bundle of joy and the only thing on your mind once you gave birth was to attack people and to stop their bags let me tell you something a woman cannot give your man pussy if he doesn't stick his dick in there who are you angry at sweetheart you got these women crying and scared to leave their house and you want to talk about stopping bags this is disgusting because you know they can't you they because you know they can't afford security so you scaring these girls to death and they can't even come to work anymore and you want to let your publicist write something about stopping bags do you know what the fuck it is to sit in your fucking room for hours and days at a time writing raps you came into my fucking culture i never had to fucking dj to play my songs you calling black women roaches you beat getting girls beat up because of what your man doing no real bitches never do that you never attack the woman you never attack the woman you take that up with your fucking man fuck out of here you're angry and you're sad and i really this is not funny and this is not about attacking this is about get this woman some fucking help this woman is at the best stage in her career and she's out here throwing bottles and throwing shoes who the fuck is gonna give her a fucking intervention get the fuck out of here with this bullshit you niggas don't care somebody, until somebody's fucking dead you niggas want somebody to fucking die until y'all stop until y'all stop this bullshit laughing at this shit this shit ain't fucking funny you put your hands on certain people you gonna die period and y'all sitting here like making this shit a joke i'm not the bitches in a strip club and i'm not a bitch on a reality show my money is very fucking long too let's come back now. Anyways, after this, on the same month, Cardi's sister, Hennessy, was saying some shit about Nicki in this IG post. The original post was about Cardi's performance at the Global Citizens Festival and someone commented, she has no stage presence and Miss Hennessy, out of nowhere, said, but Nicki be on drugs on stage looking like a Head. There were and you could have dated Nessie, the I get I wrong, she never I apologized. The post had nothing to do with Nikki, and so did the comment. How is Nikki involved here? Miss Hennessy gets into a fight with Raleigh. It's not really that important, but Miss Raw was eating her up in one of those replies. Raleigh said, Keep playing with me, you dumb bitch, and I'm gonna rag you like I did your sister. So Raw kind of suggests that she was the one who punched Cardi B and not security like it was originally alleged as. And this will later be confirmed by Nikki on Queen Radio, but I'm getting too ahead of myself. On October 16, 2018, Nikki Minaj releases her collaboration with Future, Transformer, and in the the song, Nicki Minaj takes multiple jabs at Cardi B. What the fuck? I'm gonna have to pump fakes on these hoes. Real shooters, I don't never pump fake on these hoes. This could be a reference to Cardi B throwing her shoes or pumps at Nicki. fo 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 abums am pull a milli for a show, while these bitches is serving Milli Vanilli on a low. Milli Vanilli, if you don't know, was a popular duo act who got exposed for not actually singing in their songs and they were merely lip syncing. So Nicki uses this reference to say that some rappers don't write their own raps, likely a reference to Cardi B. They ain't one, huh? now she out here facing calm, had a chance but gotta mean that she's a goner this is a different tax bracket upper echelon i'm still the bad guy i am the decepticon some call me nikki but some call me megatron i'm stopping bags and i don't need the red octagon she is referencing how people paint her as the bad guy and how she is stopping bags like cardi b alluded to in her message the sister hennessy then claims that nikki minaj leaked cardi's phone number as well as mariah lynn's number through a post on instagram she says Nicki Minaj then addresses this on the 10th episode of Queen Radio, and this is what she had to say. You know what? Before we get into some things, because you can tell I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't. Like, I have protected people that I shouldn't protect. You got your family saying that I need to control my fans, but you're not controlling your family when they're calling me saying I'm on stage looking like a cat. So what's good, girl? Like, are we going to be, you know, civilized and mature and tell everyone around us to relax or not? Like, since I've done this show, I haven't lied about a thing. Like, I really make it my business not to say anything that's not truthful or that I don't have receipts for. And I didn't want to talk about this. And I haven't. I spoke about it on Queen Radio and I never spoke about it, talk about it again. again. Mm -hmm. But there's lives. There's people, you know, calling me out my name all the time. It's magazine interviews. It's this interviews. It's that, 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 mm -hmm. that. But then yesterday or whatever, 
I think, you know, the sister was just saying some more really rude things about me. Lies. And so should I just not defend myself ever? I know I'm the queen and I'm classy and it's all good and I'm rich out my... I mean, I get it. But first thing I want to start by saying is that... And there's no way I can lie about this because I guarantee fucking to you there is surveillance footage in the building where the assault took place. I also had my cameraman there. So just to clear everything up for people who don't know, Ra really, really beat Cardi's ass bad. Like, really bad. And I'm not trying to, you know, and I'm not trying to be messy. You went home and told people that security hit you. And we let that lie continue because of legal reasons. I told Ra, don't tell anyone you hit her because I don't want nobody trying to sue me because they're going to come to the person with money. Instead, you went home and told you, I guess you had to look like a gangster in front of your friends and your family and da 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 I get it. Ra beat you so bad that I was mad at Ra. Like, Ra, I'm talking about the punches was so hard in your head that I was mad at Ra. I'm like, yo, I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, but Ra didn't like her attitude the way she came at me. But I told Ra, like, yo, she didn't put her hands on me, but Ra just was like, yo, I couldn't take that chance. It looked like she was about to put her hand on you. But anybody that knows me knows I don't swear to God. I swear to God on my life. Ra held her head and punched her like, I don't know, eight, nine, ten times, and I could hear it, and it was like, like, I'm talking about the hardest punches you've ever heard in your life. And then you go and you got your sister calling me a crackhead and saying I'm leaking numbers and saying shit about my, the way I, I I'm, be- the, fa- the fact that you would even discuss my looks is insane. Any, either of you. I'm a bad bitch. Always been a bad bitch. You got her talking about my, the way I look. It's, it's like, okay, you can't control your sister, but you want me to control millions of fans? Lying on me, telling me I leak numbers of people I've never had in my life? I've never leaked a number in my life on, on God. And y'all continue to lie on me because it's so important for you to make me look like a bad person. And I protected you from the situation of saying how badly you got beat. And that lady that was with you didn't touch Rod, didn't do a thing. Nobody that was with you did a thing, and you know that. You know that. You know that. Anybody that want to pull up the surveillance footage, I will give you $100,000. Pull up the surveillance footage. Ooh. Anybody that said that that, that shit didn't happen, I don't got it. I never come up here and lie. And, and for what? A hundred bands. For what? I didn't even go there because I'm not messy. I'm not tacky. I don't have to go around and say, ha, 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 you got to be like, I'm not a child. But you got your sister calling my friends all type of disrespect. We was minding our business. I'm talking to my fans and, you know, enjoying, like, interacting with my fans. Why are y'all so fucking obsessed with me? Leave me alone. You're always on live talking about my fans. Your sister's talking about me and my friends. Leave us alone. What is your problem? Now I ha- now I said it. Now I said it. Because people was calling Ra a liar. And even though I was mad that Ra did that, I'm not going to let Ra look like a liar when everybody was there. We all were there. I have I have a cameraman. That- and then you tried to take my camera. She tried to take the camera from my cameraman because she don't want that out. But sweetheart, I'm not going to put that out. I'm not like that. I'm not going to put out you getting beat up. For what? For what? Tell your people to leave me the fuck alone. Tell your people stop fucking talking about me. It's not regular comments and shit. Nobody ain't say Nikki name. Your sister bringing up Nikki. For what? Let's make our music and just be happy. Like what is going on? This is ridiculous. I don't want to put the footage out. I just want people to keep my name out their mouth. You're so agitated when my fans defend me, yet you allow people close to you to defend fame my character and lie on me. We can all make this stop. We can make it stop. As soon as Ra let your head up, I saw the knot on your head. And you and you and you know damn well if a nigga hit you, nigga, you would have got niggas involved. Cause if a nigga hit me, I'm getting my niggas involved. So you know damn well a nigga ain't put that knot on your head. But we let that ride. We let so much ride. I let it ride that I I I met up with you in a hotel room and you told me that my verse on the 21 Savage London uh, London on the track offset record was about you. I called my engineer. I said, hey, can you tell her when I recorded this verse? She wasn't popping yet. I didn't know anything about her because she was like she said that I did that verse about her so Offset couldn't do the video you talking about stopping bags I, I never tell the truth about anything but if we want to talk about so Offset and 21 Savage didn't do that London on the track record because she said that I was talking about her it was clear that she wanted to turn them against me and she succeeded that's what she wanted to do mm. because at a, you know you know what I mean she succeeded in that and then the the Crippy Kush record she wanted to get on that record I ended up getting on it mm-hmm. and if you notice it went from being 21 Savage to Travis Scott on it he 
wasn't allowed because he was on her single. And it's interesting with Travis Scott. So now, mind you, I could have said you stopped my bag twice with two videos. I never said a word. But y'all keep on saying I'm stopping. Stopping what? They asked me, am I OK with putting Travis Scott on the Krippy Kush remix? You know, instead mm -hmm. of instead of 21. And I said, sure. And he ended up being in the video. You know what I mean? Like, so much I can say. She and I met face to face. And there are things that we discussed in that room that I still won't say because I know if I say it's going to cause problems in her for her circle. And I and I'm not a I'm not a, a devious person. You're just trying to leave it alone. I'm, I just want to I just want everybody to leave me alone. And then my fans will leave you alone. My fans always say if y'all leave Nikki alone, we won't have shit to say. But you can't lie on me. Leaking numbers. I was doing a photo shoot. I, I didn't even know what was happening. Somebody hit my phone. And I'm like, what's going on? Leaking numbers. What type of bird shit you talking about, bitch? Stop lying on me. Like, leave me the fuck alone. You wanted my attention, sister. You wanted my attention. You been taught. You been saying fucked up shit about me on comments. I didn't say shit. But it's like how much? Now you know the truth. Your big sister came home and lied to you. Now you know the truth. Now what? Now what? Because I really saw people in comments t talking about. I have the footage. <laughs> And I'm sure that building has the footage too. Common sense will tell y'all that. 21 Savage backs out of two videos because he's on a single with you. Not only that, you asked me to be on your second single. My manager, G. Roperson, is right here. Then you speak to, what's the nigga name? First manager, G. What's his name? Shaft. You asked me to be on your second single. And I said no because it, I feel like it's too much because uh, Motorsport was about to come out. Now you acting like you lovey-dovey with them girls. Why you ain't asked Remy and Kim to be on your single, baby girl? Stop the bags. Huh? You, you, <laughs> you understand? Like, there's so many things I can say and I don't. You had cocksucker of the month Jason Lee go and tell people I'm stopping bags. They strategically put out these lies but you know with people from her camp. I, if I tell you what Kaiser said about you it'll be a war. I've kept my lips sealed because I don't need to be messy. I'm in a great place in my life. I love my life. I love where I am in life. By the way we got some new music coming on in one hour. Also we got the merch NickiMinajQueen.com Oh NickiMinajQueen.com Those jackets and book bags is fire. <laughs> oh, true that. I just want to go on record having said having said this. Anybody that was online know damn well. Neither me nor Ra nor Brooke said anything to your sister. She's just been saying nasty things about us. Control your sister because I was fine with leaving everything good and you know we can be happy for each other. We can exist and and do our thing and be happy. There really there's nothing that really makes me not like you like that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you know the things that I spoke to you about in that hotel room. We gonna keep that between me and you. For now. For now. London on the track was so disappointed. I felt so bad for him. You know, he was like, damn, they, you know, he tried everything. Once they thought that once she, one, you know, if your girlfriend says somebody's dissing me, of course you're not going to do a video with them. I get it, you know, but I wasn't dissing you. And then on Motorsport, you said I was dissing you because I called you a quarterback. When Lil Wayne said that was the best compliment I've ever given a female rapper ever. Then they told, they said, they said that I was dissing Offset on the, uh, me and my amigos, no, not Offset. That's a metaphor. That's a a bar that I wasn't dissing Offset but she told him I was dissing him but so she's they've planted a lot of this you know seeds for them not to for those people not to like me she did and she succeeded because I don't speak up I'm perfectly fine with never talking about this again I'm perfectly fine with y'all never bringing me up again and me never bringing you up again I hear the shot you taking but I'm a rapper remember that we have you on footage trying to take my cameraman's camera <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason why you wanted that footage babe so Nicki Minaj confirms Raleigh punched Cardi B and not security no flag had no video because Cardi felt Nicki's verse was about her and she told Offset not to do the video and 21 Savage did not do the video as well. Nicki says she did not leak any numbers and Nicki reveals that Cardi asked her to be in Barty or Cardi but Nicki declined. Nicki also mentions Creepy Kush wherein she claims that 21 Savage was replaced by Travis Scott because Cardi didn't want 21 Savage to feature with Nicki and since 21 Savage was already featured on Cardi's single. But this claim will be later on debunked by Cardi B. Also, a new Nicki feature, Dip, was about to be released and I will get back to this later. And also Nicki released new merch and the merch was a response to Cardi B's and Remy Moss accusations that Nikki stopped their bag. So Nikki created the merch line called Nikki Stop My Bag Merch, which had these merch containing Nikki Stop My Bag slogans. And if you have any of these merch, hit me up because I am dying to get my hands on one of these, please. Cardi B responds to all of this by ranting on Instagram with several videos. Check this out. This is my thing, Nikki Minaj, right? How you saying that I got ragged by Riley when there is so many footages of that night, every single angle, and where am I getting ragged at? Why would I be here sitting in line like, oh yeah, I did this, I did that knowing that the next day there's gonna be so much footages of that same night and second of all how you say 
that I was the, the wild animal, that I attacked you, that you was mortified, that you was humiliated, playing the victim, but now you're the gangster. You need to pick a side. Do you want to be the victim or do you want to be the gangster? You lie so much, you can't even keep up with your fucking lies. First, you're saying that you got the footage, your cameraman got the footage, but now you're talking about you want to pay somebody 100000 if they give you the footage? Yo, make sense when you're talking. I thought you was the victim. I know what this footage of. You standing on the wall talking about, I'm standing right here, Miss Chung Lee, the street fighter. Get the fuck out of here. And since you want to bring that motorsport shit up again, I'm glad you brought it up because I've been dying to talk about it for a fucking hot minute. First of all, you changed your verse two or three times and the day before... We were supposed to do the motorsport video. You turned in your last verse of it. And I was not feeling of you talking about, oh, if Cardi the QB, I'm Nick Lombardi, following it up with, bitch, you my son, go sit on a party. Bitch, you not my coach, because you never helped me to get in this fucking career. And I'm nothing like you, so you, I'm definitely not your fucking son. I'm a real-ass person. You not. So fuck out of here. And I called you that night. Oh, and I got the receipts, babe. All right. There's my phone. I'm going to my camera. That I went all the way up, October 22nd, this was your number, I called you twice, and you didn't answer. No, show you, show you, show you, it's from the beginning. And I told my label, I'm not doing the video if she don't change her verse. And then my thing is, if you had a problem that I went on the radio and I said that you changed your verse, which you did, which I'm not lying, sis, you had a whole six months to call my phone and talk about it like a grown-ass woman. Or you could have hit up Quavo so we could link up like the first time that we linked up and talk about shit in L.A. But no, you waited a whole six months when you dropped the single to talk about it. How convenient is that? Wow. How convenient is fucking that? And then you want to talk about how I wanted to be on the Creepy Kush remix and I was trying to stop your back. Sis, what are you talking about? First of all, I didn't even know Bad Bunny back then. That's one. And second of all, for months, I was promoting a Spanish record with Osuna that everybody knew that I was promoting. So what are you talking about? You're the one that be hopping on remixes. So why would I want to hop on a song that was already out in the Latin community for like three, three, four, five months? What are you talking about? But you, but, uh, but let's talk facts now, okay? Now let's talk about how you barked at your managers because they got the, because you and GZ got the same management and you barked at them because they gave me the No Limit record, which they presented to you first and you didn't like the record. You didn't believe in the record. Nobody actually believed in the record. Me and GZ, every single time that it climbed up the charts, we was extremely excited and you barked at your management because they gave me the record and that's fucking fact. Then since you're talking about suing and shit because you claiming that Riley beat me up. Sis, I don't got to sue nobody because of a fight. I'm a street bitch. That is called snitching, you know? But since you want to talk about suing, maybe I should sue you for defamation of character since you want to claim that I'm using something illegal called payola because you don't understand why I am so fucking successful. And my thing is, just like every new artist that had a mega hit like SZA, Ella May, after they get a mega hit, everybody wants to listen to them. So why is it that when people want to listen to me, you cannot believe it, that I, I got to be cheating for that? First of all, you was bopping to my shit. Second, my new single came out called Money, right? So my thing is, my single hasn't even impacted radio yet. And yet, it's doing so good on Apple. It's actually number one on the top, char top charts, all genres on Apple. And that's the same shit that you got your queen radio on. So how can I possibly use Payola on some shit that endorses you? Man, is you shitting me? Ugh. And then, let's talk about the leak number shit, right? Let Tell me if this don't make sense. How come my phone number got leaked one hour after the altercation at the Harper's Bazaar party? Tell me how Mariah Lynn number got leaked a couple of weeks, a couple of months. I'm not sure when, you know, that whole Gwyneth situation was happening. And Riley used to have her number. Jason Lee's phone number just got leaked recently. And who had his number? Riley. How come everybody that y'all have issues with that... Y'all have the numbers in y'all camp, they numbers got leaked. My sister just got into an argument with Riley, right? Well, how come my sister number haven't gotten leaked? Because y'all don't have it. How come my new number hasn't gotten leaked? Because y'all don't have it. Isn't that fucking funny? Ain't that shit fucking funny?
Hmm. And then the people that texted my phone, that texted Mariah Lynn phone, that texted Jason Lee phone, were all barbs. You're the common denominator on it. So, you tell me. You fucking tell me. Then, after my sister posted those disturbing text messages. Oh, wait, wait. Let me show ya. This is my phone. Let me go to my text messages. I went all the way down from that fucking same day. Look. Look. This was the one that fucking got me tighted the most. And look. It starts from all the way down here. All the way down here. Oh, and it started all the way from up here. All the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. And after my sister... Show those text messages. Look what you do. You go on your Twitter and you start liking shit like this. You start liking shit um, like this. Endorsing that type of nasty ass fucking behavior. Bitch, you're fucking sick in the head. Now you're trying to say that I'm trying to stop your bag because 21 Savage didn't do a music video with you. Sis, I'm not even that close to that man. So how can I have that power to um, that man to tell him, hey, don't do this music video that you're getting paid for for me. Get the fuck out of here. That song, that no flag song that they didn't do the music video with you, 21 and Offset, the song wasn't doing good. It wasn't doing that much numbers. So why would they waste their time? And you out here saying that I'm trying to stop your bag, right? But I'm actually helping you get a bag because that diesel deal that you got, yeah, that came to me first. And I had to decline it because I'm already working with fashion brands, you know, which y'all going to see because there's more than Fashion Nova. Then that woman like me record, yeah, I had to decline it because I'm doing a lot of pop records. So I can't, you know, over exaggerate myself. But that came to me first. And then they give it to you. Oh, wait, but let me show you. Not for the One second. This on my media. See, you hear that open verse, right? Ah, okay. Okay. Period. Then, since you say you're tired of talking about it, I'm tired of talking about it too. I'm tired of the fucking whole internet shit. I'm tired of the interview shit. If you really want to talk about it. You know where to link me. We could always link up. You know who to reach out. You know we could settle it however you want to settle it. We could talk about it or we could fight it out. I'm with whatever. But I'm sick and tired of that back and forth shit. I'm not doing it. I'm in a good space right now. Let me know what's up. Wait, and then you once said that I never showed you genuine love. And that's crazy because when you pull up all my videos, you see that I'm always showing you respect. Because you're somebody that I listened to ever since I was in high school. And that's crazy to me because I show you respect, but the difference between me and a lot of these bitches, I don't suck your dick. That's the difference. What you need to do is stop focusing on other people, focus on yourself, and focus on your craft because you're out here fucking up your legacy looking like a fucking hater. No, I actually think that Cardi made some good points here, like the footage thing, but I don't know how this conversation went from stopping bags to getting deals, but Cardi claims that diesel collab Nicki had with them was actually offered to Cardi first. But Willamina the model CEO, Bill Walkerman, denies Cardi B's claims that she was offered the diesel deal before Nicki Minaj, that the diesel deal was built around Nicki Minaj. Cardi released receipts about diesel contacting her. Little Mix also comes with receipts about Cardi's claims that Little Mix offered it to Cardi first. Little Mix denied it. They said, sorry Cardi hun, but this is the tea. We've always wanted the queen. No shade. And they provided text messages which showed their original plan was to get Nicki Minaj. And they even sang Super Beast back when they were still in the X Factor. Well, after recent events, um... Nicki goes on the shade room on Instagram and comments, Stop trying to distract everyone about the fact that you lied about Rob beating your head in. Babe, we all get deals and turn them down. Same with songs, dummy. Lil Mix has been trying to get me on a song for 7 years. I finally found one I love. Yes, I passed on g -Eazy. What's your point, babe? Have you ever written a rap before? Poor baby has no idea Fashion Nova asked me to do that deal she has for over a year. Nicki Minaj then tweets, The only rapper in the history of rap who can only talk about deals and songs she supposedly turned down because she can't talk about the verse she's ever written. Fucking fraud. Whilst all of this was happening, during the 10th episode of Queen Radio actually, did by Tyga featuring Nicki Minaj was released, and Nicki's verse was aimed at Cardi. Yeah, I'm pulling your card though, got him calling me Ricky. All these bitches, my minis, got him calling me Mickey. All the rah rah never was the icon issue. Hop was bizarre, I'm covering the icon issue. I got issues, yeah, bitch, I got issues. W Vogue, Cosmo, I got issues. The pen. 
game. All these bitches, my minis, got him calling me Mickey. Just were play a mini and Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse. But this is where it gets super interesting. All the rah rah never was the icon issue. Harper's Bazaar, I'm covering the icon issue. Okay, let me explain this bar. So in early October 2018, Nikki was featured on the cover story of the fashion magazine Harper's Bazaar Vietnam, wherein she is proclaimed as a music icon. And she is also referencing the Harper's Bazaar icons party and how she is not only covering the magazine cover, but also the fight with Cardi. She's covering the iconic issue between both. But remember when Cardi did an interview with Ebro? This is what she had to say. You could talk it out because it's not always rah 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 this, rah 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 that because we grown. So Nikki is referencing Cardi and saying all the rah rah, the fighting, never was the icons or Nikki's issue. But also, this is a reference to Nikki's friend Ra Ali. All the rah rah never was the icons issue. I got issues. Yeah, bitch. I got issues. W Vogue, Cosmo. I got issues. So Nikki is referencing her image as the bad guy and how people are saying she has issues. But Nikki flips that on the next line and says W Vogue, Cosmo. I got issues. Issues. So she's flipped it and now she's referencing magazine issues. Nikki has appeared on the cover of all three of those magazines. The pen game. Say what you want about Nikki Minaj, but she can write a diss and a rap. Nikki tweets, We can get on live and have the convo for the world to see, do a lie detector test together, do an interview in hashtag Queen Radio, or we can both sit in a room together, hear a beat for the first time, and have ourselves film the writing to it. Hashtag div video out now. Cardi B never responds. But Nikki does tweet the same day, Okay you guys, let's focus on positive things only from here on out. We are also blessed. I know this stuff is entertaining and funny to a lot of people, but I won't be discussing this nonsense anymore. Thank you for the support and encouragement year after year. Love you. And Cardi B posts this screenshot on Instagram with the caption, at Nicki Minaj, all right then. Let's keep it positive and keep it pushing. So now that both parties have now wavered their flag and agreed to keep it positive and keep it pushing, it seems as if the feud has now been squashed. Thank you for watching and good night, everyone. What? There's another part? Uh Apparently, it's not yet done. <sighs> well, let's go to the next part. It's getting tired now, though, to me. I, in the beginning, I was like, okay, it's cool, ha <laughs> ha. After they ended the feud, they actually did stop talking about it for a while. And they even have said some nice things about each other. They didn't really interact much here, but there were some incidents that did happen that I think is important to know the current state of this feud. Plus, you know, the constant fighting between the fans. On November 28, 2018, Nicki Minaj was featured on the song Mama with Kanye West and him, and she kind of shades Cardi B here, rapping, I was out in Spain, rocking the Medusa head, I never have to give a rap producer head, I got all these bitches wanna be Barbie dolls, Barbie dream house, pink and purple marble walls, but pull up in the Barbie Barbie fin the berry y'all, she threw dirt on my name, ended up with her own berry y'all. On November 30, 2018, Nicki Minaj released a music video to her song, Good Form, which featured a cameo from Batty G and Jade, the two strippers that Cardi B allegedly ordered an attack on. On February 2, 2019, Nicki Minaj dropped a Queen Radio episode, and in that episode, she released these two freestyles, Barbie Going Bad and Drip Too Hard. In Barbie Going Bad, though she mainly dissed Mickey Mouse and Sister Drake, she did take a swipe at Cardi B here, imitating Nicki by a ghost rather dissing me. Okay, I'm sorry, but Nicki was crazy for this. Also in early February 2019, Blueface teased the remix to his hit song, Tatiana, with Cardi B on his social media. And their official remix was released on February 16, 2019. Now what's interesting about this is earlier in February 6, 2019, Nicki Minaj released her freestyle using the Tatiana beat. And she kind of had a lot of disses towards Cardi here. You gonna have to give me Tatiana if you're trying to get I call my ops Apiana. They shut down Eve Saints Loriana. And I want you on my page, Blockiana. Flow Taylor made like Tiana. They copy my style, Copiana. Roger that over Copiana. Benny Hanna to Katana. Bitch, I've been Madonna. He's screaming my government. Oh, oh, Nikitana. You look like Nikki now. Still, you Takiana. To keep it 100, bitch, you Wakiana. You peanut head bitches, it's over with Joliana. Papa da da. Papa da da. Oh. Pin at the top. Before the song came out, bitch, you've been a thought. Meanwhile, Cardi and her verse says. <laughs> Which could be a diss towards Nikki as Nikki is in the remix of Plain Jane. So, did Nikki hear that Cardi was getting on this song so she released her freestyle before the remix? Or was it all a coincidence? We have to know that the song was released the same day Blueface started teasing Cardi B on the vocals. So, on February 11, 2019, the Grammys happened and Cardi B won Rap Album of the Year for Invasion of Privacy. Do I think Cardi deserved it? Well... Anyways, when Cardi won, guess who they flocked to? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj was not nominated, did not attend, or has not even mentioned the Grammys. Everyone clowned Nicki for not having a Grammy. Which if you want to know why Nicki has no Grammys, watch my video about that. Anyway, so yeah, Nicki was getting a lot of hate because Cardi won a Grammy before Nicki. First off, Nicki should have been nominated for Queen. I don't care what y'all say, quality-wise, Queen deserved something. Chun Lee, Barbie Dreams, or Barbie Tings should have been nominated for Best Rap Performance at least. But Nicki is blackballed, so what do we expect? One of those that dragged Nicki was BET, which if you don't know stands for Black Entertainment 
television. When posting an article about Cardi's win, the article's title said, Cardi B is the first solo female rapper to win Best Rap Album and fans are weeping. And they put as a caption, Meanwhile, Nicki Minaj is being dragged by her lace front. This caused an onslaught of backlash towards BET and Nicki says as a result that Young Money will no longer be a part of the BET experience or award show. Cardi B then responds to this and even kind of defends Nicki Minaj. It's not my style for people to put other people down to uplift somebody else. That's not my style and that's not what I'm with and I don't support that. On August 16, 2019, Nicki Minaj does an interview with Joe Budden and they talk about a lot of things, including how Joe Budden was pushing this narrative that Nicki didn't know that Cardi B was on motorsports. So the motorsports situation is included and they also talk about other things and some people claim Nicki Minaj shades Cardi B. Let's take a look. Did okay, you, Joe. Did, did you change anything about, about that verse after you heard whatever the last product, final product was from her? Because we said that too that it sound like some things might have been altered. So let me, before I answer that question, because I I don't have a problem with answering that question. I knew the verse was on the song. I hate that I'm even giving this stupid fucking song this much attention. It wasn't about the song. It was that you did it with that song and then you did it with this song, uh, Hot Girl Summer. It's basically painting me out to be a liar. I don't like that. I take offense to that. Okay. I'd rather you go in there and say, Nikki's a bitch. My thing is, I know you guys are going to speculate. That's what that's what media does. You you guys speculate. Y'all have fun. It's, it is what it is. But when I come out and, and actually say, hey guys, this is exactly what exactly what happened. And then you basically say, nope, I know Nikki. I know she went. To <laughs> it makes me look like a fucking psycho. Just and you did it with two songs with two female rappers. And that's why people have the narrative of Nikki and female rappers. When you're insecure, you tell lies because you don't want others to shine based on their talent sometimes. I am gonna tell the real deal. I have always have the receipts to prove what I'm gonna say, always, and that'll never change. There were a lot of people who I had never said anything bad about, who I thought we were, you know, I was cool with, that jumped on the, the hate train. And my thing is, when you say things like, oh, well, we're past it, yes, I'm past it, praise be to God. But I still had to go through these things because of people you. like you who made a sport out of tearing down a young black woman who's done nothing but come in this game with an authentic come up, writing raps and doing what the fuck was really actually necessary. No Instagram, no reality shows, no sucking DJ's dicks. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then to have people who I would think are smart enough to see that do nothing but tear me You're down. You're telling me people are sucking DJ's dicks. Yeah. The people who I gave that respect to, who, would, who I thought was like, tag, I'm not gonna ever forget the work Nikki's put in. Just like I'm not ever gonna forget the work Jay, uh, Jay's put in, or Lil Wayne's put in, or Eminem's put in. Those people came together, came together to try to end me. And sweetheart, before I get off this Insta, let me say this, it'll never fucking happen. You can go all the everything y'all want to, every witch doctor in the motherfucking world, it'll never fucking happen. Praise be to God. I am who I am because I am who I am. You see, I don't have to go in a room with a bunch of men who, to, cre to create my sound, my image, my anything. I am who I am. Take it or fucking leave it. But I put in the motherfucking work. I put in the work. Good night. Yo, Nikki, where do you rate yourself? I, like I definitely rate myself top oh, 10. Oh, basically. Top 10 dead or alive. Men, men and women. I, n I don't think that there's a woman alive seeing me. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. And people always try to say, oh, because you talk about pussy or whatever. You Shut the fuck up. I could talk about pussy, I could talk about the moon, the sky, every motherfucking thing under this fucking moon and wrap circles around bitches' heads. I don't give a fuck. And rapping fast don't mean you can rap, so shut the fuck up. And looking ugly or looking like a man don't mean you can rap, so sit down. Do you still think that Atlantic has it out for you? Or is that is that over with? Just go ask the three girls that came out and said that they were asked to just Nicki Minaj if they got a, a deal with them. Just go ask them. Do you think The Breakfast Club is in bed with that label and it's kind of added to that? Do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is what I want to say. This is what I meant to say on Queen Radio today. I would feel so fucking crazy if I had number ones and Grammys and ain't on nobody top 50 list. You don't, but you were on a top no, no, 50 no. list. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm not talking about myself. Oh. <laughs> Oh. And I'm and it's, I'm a, a shot. Wait, let me do the math. No, no. And, yeah, and hold on. Right let me shut up. And, ho and hold on. And hold on. Let me say this. Yeah. And, and let me say this. We we just sat here and spoke for for an hour. Mm -hmm. And 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 also I've seen stuff on the internet about this top fifty thing. I have not once seen anyone say, "Well, does he have a Grammy?" Cardi B seems to respond to this by tweeting, One year and some changes later, and my album is still selling. Only list I give a fuck about. Have as beautiful day, everybody. On October 2019, Cardi B does an interview with Tidal, and she says this. I, I had a debate with somebody. Not a debate. I was actually telling people the other day, like, it's like, I feel like after me, I'll say that it's kind of, like, easier for a lot of these female artists. Like, I feel like I, before me, there was no yeah. female rapper that was signed to a label. Well, you know, the ones that already been established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody was signing them. And now, 
now everybody's just signing yeah. them. If you could rap and you got a couple of followers, because nobody want to miss the opportunity. Like a lot of labels and people miss the opportunity with yeah. me because I went to a couple. <laughs> this kind of caused a little backlash on Twitter, and so Cardi tweets a bunch of stuff. I didn't say it paved the way for female rappers, but it definitely gave the hood and women hope. Labels were signing female rappers and putting them in a shelf and not focusing on them, not giving them proper attention. It seems like it was impossible for it to be more than one female rapper. These male rappers were not even taking money from female rappers for a feature because it seems far stretched for another woman to make it. I see so many male artists collabing with females even now. But how many female rappers before me were getting chances or getting pushed? And for the slow ones again, no, ain't made females want to rap because bitches been rapping, bitches been have talent, but the music industry wasn't believing and shitting on female rappers. And that's Big Bentley. No matter how it would have worded, people will always find a way to flip it and make it negative because they hate Cardi but yet they still can't find me a magazine, a big festival, a male female rapper collab that happened between 2008 and 2017 except for one female rapper. Your comprehension skills must be on slow because I never discredit nobody. There's been female rappers before I was born and died out due to hope and it got revived back in 08. And the music industry made it the stigma like there could only be one. I mean yeah, I think the industry was so scared to get another female rapper to compete with Nicki Minaj because during Nicki's reign, no female rapper was able to compete with her and be consistent. But that's because no one had the talent level to sustain the success that Nicki Minaj had. The only sin Nicki committed was that she raised the bar so high for female rappers, it became hard for anyone to enter. Iggy Azalea got close to attaining Nicki's success, but she kind of fell off after Fancy and she wasn't consistent. But yeah, she came and went, and then you came, and we can't deny that after Cardi, female rap became more visible as a genre. Now, some might say you helped open doors for female rappers, some might say you lowered the bar for female rap, some might say both. Then on November 7, 2019, Tusa by Karol G and Nicki Minaj was released, and it was an international success. It is the longest running number one single on the Argentina Hot 100. It was nominated for two Latin Grammy Awards. The song was certified in multiple countries, going on to become the highest certified song in Mexico by Amprofon. Since it was a huge success and Nicki was collaborating with a Latin artist, people were wondering why Cardi B was not asked to be in the song. And she actually tweeted and then deleted because I passed on it. Now sip on that. She also had some words on Twitter which even led to her meeting up with the Barb and the Bardi gang on Twitter. She also posted this on November 13, 2019. The post says with the caption, I'm ready to forgive ya. Though she didn't name names, fans were certain that this was about Nicki Minaj. On June 12, 2020, trolls by him and Nicki Minaj was released and the song primarily takes aims at internet trolls. She also sneaks in some jabs against Cardi here. I know you don't like me. You wanna fight me. Always on my page, never double tap like me. Referencing when Cardi was caught lurking on Nicki's picture. I rap my own lurks, a lot of these bitches gimmicks. This are the Nicki style, no all of them will mimic. Rex, I got him. Mary, I'm popping. They keep hating, but still watching. Check the boards, I'm still topping. Bust then or plain Jane, I got options. It's a bunch of mini me's, I'm the one they mocking. Showed you how to get a bag, now you go shopping. When I come out, all the snake bitches talk plotting. When I come out, it's a sweet bitches talk mopping. On August 7, 2020, Cardi B released her collaboration WAP with Megan Thee Stallion, who previously in 2019 collabed with Nicki on Hot Girl Summer. Though this affected Nicki and Megan's feud, if you can still call it that, it still sort of involves Cardi and Nicki. The reason this is so interesting is because back in July 30, 2019, when Nicki Minaj went on live with Megan Thee Stallion, and Megan Thee Stallion called out rappers who don't write their own bars, people assumed Megan Thee Stallion was talking about Cardi B. After Megan Thee Stallion said that comment, Nicki Minaj immediately stopped her because she didn't want anything to go back to her and because she knew that the media would twist her words if she said anything. I'm gonna go write some shit. <laughs> okay, so you can stop because what? stop because any anything what? I say that I just be having a stay calm. Uh, no, no, see because no, I know, but from you it's fine. But for me, child, I can't say nothing. I'm not allowed to say shit. So after that live, the barbs then trended hashtag write a rap on Twitter. And Nicki Minaj responds to the barbs saying, Yo, hashtag the barbs are in time out. In promoting WAP, Cardi B did an interview with Apple Music and she said this. When I was younger, when I was six, seven, there was a lot of different female rappers. And then there was a time that there was no female rappers at all. Like, it's like I had to keep replaying songs from the early 2000s. Like, I have to keep replaying it, replaying it, replaying it because for a while there wasn't no female rapper. And then there was one female rapper that dominated for a very long time long time you know what I'm saying and and she did pretty good she's and been still dominating so now it's like more and she mentioned that it was a dying industry before one unnamed rapper came in the game and revamped it I mean even though she didn't say her name Come on, she was talking about Nicki Minaj. That's common sense at this point. I mean, props to her for giving credit to Nicki. I really hope she just kept on this path and didn't mind the drama and just did her thing. But unfortunately, she kept on going back and forth with the barbs, which 
I get it. I can admit the barbs can get annoying at times and I'm a barb myself. Around October 2020, there actually was a rumor that Cardi and Nicki has a collab called Lavish, which was fueled by this Cardi tweet. Since you're mad, I'ma give you something to be mad about. This next single and collab gonna have you sick since you're here. But that rumor, the Lavish rumor, is fake. It's not real. On November 21, 2020, Nicki Minaj announced that she will be releasing her docuseries soon with HBO Max. Now, this is important to know because HBO Max teased a Nicki docuseries on one of their promos. Cardi B around December 20, 2020, to prove that she didn't get surgery and she just used a filter, because people were saying she got surgery, she posted a screen recording of herself which exposed her gallery. Now, in her gallery, there was a screenshot of a tweet with the promo for Nicki's docuseries. Cardi deleted the tweet and never addressed it, which kind of confirms that she was stalking Nicki Minaj. Because of this incident, Barb's replaced their PFP with this Nicki photo, which was the photo Cardi B was caught lurking on. And since both of them are rappers, both threw shots at each other in their songs. In the Welcome to the Party remix, Nicki Minaj hates Cardi B, rapping, I never tap tap if I don't like a hoe, you act act like you like her though. Never backtrack if I'm fucking with you, can't sit with this but you might can go. All these Silly bitches, I'ma kill these bitches, yo pop, who the fuck won't smoke? Brr. Keep, keep it real, you really mad cause your baby dad used to like me though. I, I ain't fuck him cause I ain't want him. Don't take a hike like a hiker though. Baby, welcome to the party. Colorful weave when your makeup is beaten, that's how you act just like a bobby. Baby, welcome to the party. He wanna party with bobby. The lines are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to note one particular lyric. He wanna party with bobby. This might be a reference to Cardi's single, Barty or Cardi, which if you remember, Cardi originally asked Nikki to be on. In Barty or Cardi, Cardi goes, your bitch wanna party with Cardi. And Nikki says here, he wanna party with Barbie. On May 14, 2021, Nikki Minaj re-released Beam Me Up Scotty on all streaming services with three new songs, Seeing Green, Fractions, and Crocodile Teeth Remix. Both Seeing Green and Fractions has this is towards Cardi B. In Seeing Green, Nicki Minaj rap these bitches copy my homework, that's what they hand in. That's why I'm private like the airports are land in. These bitches time TikTok and better stick to dancing. These bitches told my sons, who could ever deny it? My packs hit different, who could ever supply it? No one bitch could be my op, that shit offends me. It's corporate giants and machines that went against me. I wash bitches, man, they couldn't even rinse me. She said she hot, I said, well, bitch, come and convince me. In fractions, Nicki Minaj raps. Bitches act like they want action, heard they want action. Bitch, we ain't ducking no action. I'm about to give them attractions and a distraction. Then I'ma line them like fractions. Took a break, I'll let them live. Look at all them eating. But these bitches gonna be mad once I call this meet. Cause they gotta move around once the queen is queen. And I put these bitches on game. They should be kissing my feet. I try to give them some press. They try to say it was beef. Bitches wanna be around me, but I do not fuck with them. These bitches biting like Joe. Shout out to Kamala though. It's them weak bars thinking that she doesn't for me. How great is your homework, bitch? It's incomplete. If you was trying to be my son, then mission complete. I'm the final level, bitch. They on a mission to beat. How wish these bitches wanted more talent and less clout. I fall back and just give them some space. Cause when you already won, what the fuck is a race? Look at them fucking for raps. Aw, oh, what a disgrace. I put that in A raw. None of you bitches is safe. So again, I think the lyrics are very self explanatory. But I want to direct you to these lyrics. I tried to give him some press, they tried to say it was beef, and I wish these bitches wanted more talent and less clout. Not only are both press and clout Cardi songs, she might be also referring to her original motorsport verse, when she shouts out Cardi. I tried to give him some press, they tried to say it was beef. Cardi B then released two collaborations, Big Paper with DJ Khaled and Type Shit with Amigos. In Big Paper, Cardi said, I son bitches move culture out the car seat, got these hoes nervous I can spit it to their heartbeat. This might be Cardi's take on Nicki's iconic sun line, just not done well. Five number one, take a five number none. Cardi this, Cardi that, make me more famous the most imitated innovated instigated playlist favorite your shit never played it praying on my downfall you never got a prayer had to tighten up my circle so i never fit a square in type shit cardi raps once hoes start doing bad they need something they can blame it on bitches gonna be as hot as me in the summertime with a blanket on bitches really be puppets i'm in the lamb shop and i don't play along could have let these fuckos drown but i let them ride my wave man these hoes looking real light and this ass looking real heavy feel like yonce with this birkin but i'm rolling with this kelly okay for being honest i actually kind of liked her verse here, not gonna lie. And okay, honestly, I don't want to cover the rest of 2021 and 2022 anymore because it's becoming very repetitive. Nicki Minaj tweets literally one emoji and somehow she's shading Cardi B. Cardi B gets into a fight with the barb seemingly every other month. We're tired, okay? We're just very tired. Also, there's a lot of theories out there about the Nicki and Cardi feud. Like how Cardi's allegedly waiting for Nicki to drop her album so she can drop hers. Or Cardi being somehow involved with Nicki's current case. But since a lot of these are just speculation and really has no solid proof between them, I'm not gonna elaborate on it. Take those theories with a grain of salt. Now that we are done with the feud break, down. Finally, let's get into my opinions on this feud.
you know, that's just my opinion. Everybody got an opinion, everybody got something to say, everybody- Hello everyone, it's Nathie, and now that we're done with the video, how did you like it? I think a lot of people thought, specifically Barb's, thought that this was gonna be an expose in Cardi. Which when creating this video, I didn't think of doing that. I just went about and just wanted to create a timeline of this feud. And I think I was very unbiased this time around. I watched my previous feud breakdowns. Not only was it so bad, I don't know why you guys watched it. It was also really biased. So I wanted to change that this time around. And some people might think I left a lot of things out, especially during 2021 and 2022. But the thing is, I didn't want this to be a 2 hour plus video. I think it's already pushing that mark. Also, I think it's not only very repetitive, like I don't want to detail every single time Cardi goes on about the barbs, that's gonna be like a 5 hour plus video. But I also think even without those incidents, we can still identify the main problem of this feud and who really was the cause of it. I talked in the beginning of the video about how this feud seemed like destiny and now you watch the video, tell me I was wrong. You can't because this feud from the start, it was gonna happen eventually because every single piece was really leaning towards them having a feud. And with this in mind, let's ask ourselves, can we really blame these women for the feud that happened when the game that they were playing was rigged from the start? Hate the game, not the player, right? Cardi B was signed to a label to try to get Nicki Minaj out of here. She was friends with Nicki's biggest rivals in the rap game, Remy Ma and Lil' Kim. The rap game towards females is extremely tight-knit and competitive, and with the GP and every single one pushing you and comparing you against Nicki Minaj, the quote Thanos, I am inevitable. But I think regardless of whether the game was rigged or not, I think we should still hold them accountable for the feud that they had, because they are still grown as adults. They know what's right from wrong, and they made their own decisions. And I'm just gonna say this, Cardi B is in the wrong for this feud, and I don't care what people say, oh Nicki Minaj did this, Nicki Minaj did that, let's first get this straight. Nicki Minaj did not diss Cardi B in 2017. Every diss Nicki did in 2017 that was supposed to lead towards Cardi, was towards Remy. Even in early 2018 with the Queen album before Harper's Bazaar happened, a lot of the disses are towards Remy Ma. It's towards a general pool of people. Now with the whole Harper's Bazaar situation, no matter how you try to twist it, Cardi B was still in the wrong. And I'm not the only one to agree here. I think majority of the people who gave opinions towards this feud that was thinking logically and not hopping on the Nicki hate bandwagon agree that Cardi B was wrong for this. Nicki Minaj was just caught in the crossfire. Regardless of what Nicki did or whether it's true or not, Cardi still threw a shoe at Nicki at a high class event. This literally attempted assault. The only the only reason Cardi was able to get away with this is because it was Nicki Minaj. If Cardi threw a shoe at other celebrated black women in the same caliber of Nicki, her career would be over. If she attempted to throw a shoe at Rihanna, Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, or whoever, y'all would be up in arms. Cardi would be over in an instant. But it was Nicki Minaj. And you know it's always protect black women unless it's Nicki Minaj. She had no reason to attack Nicki and the reason she did give is bullshit because her reason was that Nicki allegedly liked a tweet about your parenting, yet you provided no proof of Nicki liking anything. Why didn't Popbase or any of the official stand Twitter accounts or even Shade room post this. They're all up in Nikki's likes all the time. If Nikki did like this tweet, it would have been news. They've posted Nikki's likes before. And something this juicy, they would have posted it in seconds. You created several videos about Nikki and you talked about deals and songs and you show Nikki's number and screenshots and the little mix instrumental and all that. But you can't provide proof of the tweet that Nikki liked. You can't show a screenshot of Nikki liking those tweets. Why? Maybe it was because the fight was premeditated or that the tweet that Nikki allegedly liked that Cardi saw was fake and she only realized it was fake after the event. And even if Nikki did like those tweets, which I think she didn't, but if she did like those tweets, that's still not a good enough reason for you to attack someone. And you know what? Let's go to Cardi's shoe of reasoning for attacking Nikki. The tweet that Nikki allegedly liked is about the message Cardi is sending as a mother by welcoming Kodak back. So Cardi decides to attack an A-list celebrity and throw a shoe at her, yell at her, threaten her at a high-class fashion event in front of multiple cameras and press for all all the world to see and make fun of you, what message is that sending? And I'm not trying to say anything about Cardi's parenting, but good parents still make lapse decisions. And this was a lapse decision on Cardi's part. And I didn't notice until researching about this feud, people had a problem with Nicki just standing there when Cardi attacked her? How? The people in Cardi B were saying Nicki was pussy because she stood there. What was Nicki supposed to do? The sad thing about this incident is that Nicki would have been damned either way. If she fought Cardi B with her boobs out, wig rip, dress rip, y'all would have been like, Nicki, what the fuck are you doing? You're pushing 40, act like a queen. But when she did act like a queen and let her bodyguards and security, which she hired and paid money for, to do their job, it's a problem? What would you have Nikki do? The funny thing is, you guys want Nikki to act like her superstar counterparts. You want her to act like Rihanna, you want her to act like Beyonce. Nikki Minaj stood and let security handle a woman trying to attack her, then waited days to address it on her radio show for about 20 minutes. Mind you, the show was like an hour long, and Nikki talked about the incident in 20 minutes. She wanted to talk about it and get over it. And her accusing Nikki of stopping her bag? What bag was Nikki trying to stop from you? That is so big of her, she didn't give any specifics. What bag was Nikki trying to stop? How was Nikki stopping your bags when you just got a number one hit on the Hot 100 and still getting number one hits till this day? How is Nikki stopping your bags when in the future you will win a Grammy, something Nikki doesn't have? How is Nikki stopping your bags when Nikki is the one blackballed from the Grammys, radio, streaming services, and getting into playlists? When she was the one in the hate train? How is Nikki stopping your bag when Nikki's bags are the ones being constantly stopped by the entire industry? Which artist had Nikki told not to collaborate with you? She thought since Remy used this narrative, why not give it a try, right? Eh? 
And it kind of worked. She kind of succeeded in trying to get people to her side. You had so much claims about Nikki, yet the only one you provided receipts for is a diesel deal and the little mix song being offered to you. Nikki and her queen radio provided several receipts. You did not. At least not anything that was of any importance. I want to get back to Cardi seemingly making it look like she was the hot new artist because she was turning down deals that Nicki Minaj has, no matter how hard Cardi tries. And this is not me being shady, this is just a fact. Cardi will never reach Nicki's level. I can liken both artists to Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez, even though I think Mariah said something like Cardi B was a Mariah Carey of rap. We're just gonna forget that. JLo, you know, she's great. She's fun to watch in movies and unlike some of her songs, she has bops, the green dress, I love her gowns, beautiful gowns, amazing gowns. She's entertaining, she's an entertainer. But the thing is, no matter how many hit songs JLo gets, how many number ones, how many Grammys, how many movies, how many deals JLo gets, she will never be Mariah. Because Mariah has that it factor, the talent. Cardi B should never be in the same conversation as Nicki Minaj. Because she just doesn't compare. And if you're gonna come here saying, but Cardi has five number ones, Nicki has got five number nuns. You lost. You lost already. Cardi B is an entertainer. She's funny, she makes people laugh, she just entertains people, whether through her raps, movies, whatever. Nicki Minaj, above all else, is a rapper. All the other shit is just on the side. Nicki Minaj is a rapper. Cardi B is an entertainer. And I think this is why I respect Lil' Kim and Remy Ma more now, even though regardless of their gimmicks back then and the things they said about Nicki Minaj, they handled their feuds like rappers. They rapped. And it's really crazy how people sided with Cardi just because they hated Nicki Minaj. And now let's go back on why you had Nicki's docuseries teaser on your phone. You deleted that tweet for a reason. I saw the video with my own eyes on Twitter. If Nicki did that, she would have been dragged by the mud. And that's another thing. I was writing the script for this video back in August and originally I was gonna say, you know Cardi was in the wrong for this feud, but they're living separate lives now. Let them be their own separate thing. They don't bother each other anymore. They just mind their business. Let's leave this feud at that. But then you get caught with Nicki on your phone and then the people you were following on Instagram and Twitter were very problematic towards Nicki. At this point, you were one of the people who are keeping this feud alive. The fans are always gonna be there. They're gonna fight each other. They're gonna keep the feud running. That's not gonna stop. But you can. The behavior listed above, that's giving obsessive. I don't even know how to respond or what to say because that's just stand behavior at this point. I really have nothing to say here. I just want to add before I say something about this again. Let's talk about your problem with the barbs. You seemingly respond to barbs every single month and I get you with this one. The amount of barbs I've muted, I don't block people, I just mute them. The amount of barbs that I've muted or unfollowed is a lot. I get you're just a human being and sometimes the barbs get under your nerves and I think the best recourse for Cardi to do is to ignore the barbs and focus on her music and her fans. I don't know why she's acting like the barbs are the only ones doing this to her when her own fan base is doing the same to Nikki. And you know that. Out of the few hundred people that you follow on Twitter, you seemingly picked some of the most problematic bardinging on Twitter. A lot of the people you follow don't even talk about you that much. They talk about Nikki all the time. I know you see the tweets your fan makes. Just don't respond to the barbs that are under your comments or whatever. Because literally those barbs are not gonna do anything to you unless you let them. You are literally feeding into their need for attention. So just stop feeding them attention. Even if all the barbs disappeared, there are still people that will hate you. Uh, and now I want to open this floor to the fans. Y'all ain't safe. To the barbs, what the fuck are y'all doing? You guys think you're slick? You're not. When I was taking screenshots of Cardi's tweets, why did I see a lot of y'all under Cardi's tweets? I'm gonna say this and it might be a little controversial, but some of you barbs are as obsessed with Cardi the way y'all claim the Bardi gang is with Nikki. Some of you guys genuinely hate Cardi and that's insane to me. I mean, I don't like Cardi, but I'm not gonna spend my entire day scrolling through her pages and likes and followers and tweet about her. That's jobless behavior. I don't even like talking about Cardi. The only reason I'm even doing this is because of Money. You guys call each other names that the other fan base is delusional, when in reality, both of you guys are just as bad and as toxic as the other. Both Barbs and Party Gang. And I don't want to diagnose the entire fan base because I know there are a lot of Barbs who are there because they genuinely support Nikki. And I'm sure same goes for Cardi's fans. But if you're 24-7 talking about the person you claim you don't like, you're not really a true fan of the person you claim you love. And I'm not saying stop talking about each other completely and stop the feud. That's stupid and that's never gonna happen and that's so unrealistic. What I'm saying is, stop being obsessed with the person you claim you don't like and get alive. And finally, to end this messy ass rant, I'm sorry guys, I'm just really talking at the top of my head. Listening to Nikki's Queen radio and how she was the one to say, let's stop with this bullshit, I realized Nicki Minaj really just wanted to wrap this feud up as fast as possible. Nicki Minaj, at the end of the day, doesn't have a problem with Cardi B per se. She didn't have a problem with Cardi B back in 2017. What she has a problem is with y'all. Because if you really think about it, all Nicki wants and cares about, other than her family, is respect and her legacy. If Nicki got the respect she's deserved and she's earned from day one, she wouldn't have been as hungry as she was in her career. The reason there is this certain drive that you just admire about Nikki is because Nikki has something to prove. And the thing is, she has already proven it. But people are still acting like she didn't. So when Cardi B and other people walks in and says, oh you're done, your career is over, yikes. What do you think Nikki's gonna do? She's gonna fight the way she knows how and the way she does best. Rap.
And there's a reason Cardi didn't fight Nikki through raps. Because she knew she was gonna lose. That's why she was fighting fight instead of rapping. And honestly, that's something unique about this feud. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj doesn't match because their expertise are different. As I said, Nicki Minaj is a rapper. Cardi B is an entertainer. Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim, say what you want about Lil' Kim, but Lil' Kim back in the past especially, she can rap. So Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim, they match. Nicki Minaj and Remy Ma, they also match. Nicki Minaj and Cardi B just doesn't. <sighs> and that's just my thoughts on the Nicki Cardi feud. Finally, oh my god, I'm done with this feud. I really, honestly guys, I really don't like talking about Cardi B. And I really was dreading creating this video. That's why it took so long because I really just, I really didn't like talking about Cardi B that much. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, more videos are on the way. Let's just hope, 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 hope. And yeah, see you guys next time. Bye. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Am I a Nicki fan? Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. Cardi B. That's suspicious. I'm not the type of person that if there's something that you could talk it out, you could talk it out because it's not always rah, 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 this, rah, 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 that because we grown. Well, that rah, rah never was the icon issue.